Welcome to Adventures in Green Agar Plays Descent into Avernus, episode 17. Mm. If you enjoy our roleplay or our content, please take a moment to smite that like button for an extra, that's right, for an extra 1d8 radiant damage, or subscribe or leave a comment. We appreciate it all. You can also find our Discord and Instagram in the description below in Avernus. <laughs> oh my god, below in Avernus, in the yeah. bad place. So, last time on Descent into Avernus. Still on the way to Bell's Forge, Des and Sovereignty concocted a bit of a matchmaker scheme for four. It worked, but it didn't. But in turn, it did put him in a communication with Dr. Cosmia, his creator, who then tasked him with searching for another surviving construct named 26. Once at Bell's Forge, Judgment spoke with Professor Vaxir on how to reestablish his severed bond, which, according to the professor, could be easily done. You just needed the, you know, the hand of Vecna. Lest both him and Anatoly either die or revert back in time. Both not good things. The rest of the group then spoke with Bell, who was overly eager to help you and gave you the location of the Bleeding Citadel while letting you keep the rods. After meeting an old friend of Fours, 26, you all took off towards the Citadel and searched for Zeriel's sword once and for all. And with that, the Sideshow Slashers take the stage. Let's get ready to rumble! So you make your way forward Downtown. to Helm with the Tormentor <laughs> through the wasteland of Avernus towards maybe one of your final destinations. Mm-hmm. Along with a new companion, 26, the perky construct, childhood friend, trope of four. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now he is the T word. What? Huh? Use the T word. Trope. No. Hey, 26, what have you been doing since you've been down here? 23, sorry, 23. 26. <laughs> There's more they're replicating. Uh, 26 turns to you and she's sitting sort of next to Fours at the helm of the Tormentor and she's sort of sitting cross-legged up, just looking up at him sort of in a, a dreamy-eyed, as much as you can imagine that way for a, a construct while he drives. And then she turns to you and gets up and sits next to you, looks you up and down for a moment and says, well, I found out that Dr. Cosney was here in Avernus. So I did what I had to do. I became a paladin of Kelimvor, the Lord of the Dead, and it allowed me to find my way to Avernus. And here I am. Wow, that you like really committed to the bit. You went full out. That's right. We do whatever we can to save our creator. Mm-hmm. It is a cool story. You're hot. Yeah. Processing. Processing. <laughs> My temperature is nominal. Ha <laughs> ha. <It> goes, no. <laughs> so what do you remember of four as like a, a little four? Like a lowercase four. You know, when he was like a baby. 26. Well, he wasn't ever a baby. He was created the same size he is now, but he had infantile processors. So in reality, we were kind of like children. We used to play all the time, of course, until he got sick. Right, right. And then um, I was gonna ask about your whole town being slaughtered, but then I was like, that doesn't seem very nice. But then I already started to talk, so. Oh, that was a sad moment. Yeah. When I awoke in, everybody had been destroyed. Dr. Cosme was gone. And Four was there, but I was unable to wake him. So I went off in search of Dr. Cosmia, and I had to walk through the whole ocean, but I made it to the Sword Coast and found more information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you Can like- walk through water? That's of course. You will have to teach me how to do that sometime. Do you not require oxygen? 
what's oxygen? That's the thing you breathe. I breathe nothing but the fine air of Avernus. Don't you say so? Ambrovia! Ambrovia! You like Brovian air. Brovia. Air smells you. We know, Anatoly. What? The air smells you, right? Des, I don't know what you're trying to say. Like you. But if you are burning me, I will say this back to you. At you. You're annoying. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm wounded. Somebody that, get that's me, Anatoly. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Well, when I was a kid, but nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody cares. I know you were going to say that. It's fine. I want to hear deaths. I love hearing stories. <laughs> I can process them quickly. Well, then I'll tell you really quickly. So when I was a kid, I didn't have any parents. So what I used to do because so she I got on the pirate ship and it was big, big adventure. And then she meets sovereignty and it was like, ooh, we love each other. And then it was like, oh, we're best friends, but we're in love. And then it was like, then she was like, oh no, I'm going to start a group. And we'll be like, oh, we'll be like the side show slashers. And we'll be like famous, make lots of money. See, boom, I told your story faster. <laughs> okay, Inspiration. I used to do it's like I would follow families through the town and I would like when I would like look at one of their little kids in the family and then I would become that because I'm a changeling surprise and then I would become that little kid are you and I would like walking? yeah I would sneak into that family and then the kid would like disappear and then I would like live with that family for a little bit and then I, and then I would like stay there and then I would like move on to another family and then I was like well I feel kind of bad to be in this kid's room what did you do with the kid Wow, it's really hot today, isn't it? <laughs> wow, Whew. it's getting warm in here. It's probably 26. That's fascinating. Do you think if mm -hmm. I was able to change my appearance, Thor would like me more? Don't change your appearance for a man. No. no. Don't tell her, Sovereignty. Absolutely <laughs> not. No, you're cool the way you are. Don't do that. I agree. You should not be a 25. You should not be a 27. 26 is perfect. Thank you, Des. I'm sure he's in love with you, bolts and all. She is very red faced and gets back up. Yeah, I told you it was warm in here. It's Do really you remember warm. anything that you did before the virus attacked for? Maybe you can jog his memory. Uh, I'm not sure. I was a prototype from before the last war in Eberron. So I'm not technically one of Dr. Cosmia's creations. I'm I'm adopted. Oh. Yeah. oh. So you're not actually for sister. This is good <laughs> for you long term. This is very good. This is good for you long term. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> four is laughing, so it's all worth it. Don't think on the wheel, four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thor drives the Tormentor off a cliff. <laughs> Ending the adventure. The adventure is over. Oh my god, that was hilarious. Alright. <laughs> that was fun. Are we there yet? No. No? No. No, we're not there yet. Hutch falls across the Tormentor. Okay. You, it doesn't take long to get to, to the Bleeding Citadel is. However, the route is difficult because as, as Avernus is ever changing, the landscape is ever changing, and the location of the Bleeding Citadel is unknown to everybody but, if, but two people. Uh, getting there may require some dexterous driving, let's say. So if you're ready to move on towards the Bleeding Citadel, we can do that. How are we feeling? I feel good. Ready? What's playing on the radio? What's playing on the on A103, your Vernus Rock Station? I'm on a highway <laughs> to hell. <laughs> <laughs> highway to hell. Still going down. <laughs> I approve. All right. 
Some time passes. Four, I need you to give me a dexterity check for driving. You can use proficiency, of course. As the terrain becomes bumpy, it looks like you're trying to get through some kind of mountain pass. And what am I using? Just a straight dex check? Straight dex check with your proficiency. Proficiency if you want. Country roads. Save me home. Uh, 17 total. 17. Okay, it's rocky, but you managed to keep the Tormentor under control. You have to maybe slow down a little bit, sadly, around some uh, passes and corners. Um, everyone else is able to hold on as much as possible. You finally round the corner, passing what seems to be some strange mist. And as you break through, finally in front of you, you've arrived at the yes. Citadel, which ah. has... Oh, oh shit. <laughs> you know, which houses Zeriel's sword. Hmm. Cool. What are those chain chains? Holding it? As you approach, yes, you do see chains. This is a very gross, disgusting scab, which has risen up to try to envelop this what seems to be a holy temple that has risen up out of Avernus. And it's just it's a it's a it's just a disgusting scab, and you can just see a little bit from the top this you know alabaster. What's left of this alabaster temple, which is going to be quickly overcome uh, by Avernus. And these black iron chains, the same ones that you saw around Elturel, right. are converging and pulling down this temple. How many are there? Uh, uh, there's five. Well, you can see. This, this scab is about 300 feet high, so it's, it's huge. Anybody want to knock? We, we know this place is for good, right? We yes, the temple, according to the dream you had from Lulu, yeah. you went through a dreamscape. Yes, the temple arose when somebody, pl- well, I th- I'm sorry, I think it was, it was Yale, one of uh, Zero's generals, plunged a sword into the ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we can probably assume it's like abandoned because it's a good place. Mm. What do you think, Judge? I'm sure there are many beings inside wishing to claim it for Avernus. Yeah. Should we? Yeah, I mean, it can be kind of hard to just take a sword and walk out. Should we like? Okay. Well, we'll proceed with caution, I guess. Forces you're driving, give me a perception check. Actually, everyone, everyone, if you're looking out, of course, you can open a helm and look, uh, a uh, portal yeah. and look out. Eight. Eight? Eight. Seventeen. Wow. Twenty-two. Twenty-two? Seventeen? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Judgment? Three. Three. The rest of you, uh, okay, those who rolled above a 15, notice that the place is eerily quiet and it's likely not been inhabited or anything's been here for a very, very long time. Well, I think that was right. I kind of get the feeling that like, because it's a good place, nobody's here. So I think it, I don't think we're gonna be surprised by anybody. Let's hope not. I am done with surprises. That mm-hmm. sounds like a good way to get yourself killed, this. Well, I know, but I had like a feeling. Zoom, the danger could be lurking around any corner. Um, I'm actually very alert, so nothing can actually surprise me. Okay. She goes, "Meta talk." I have the alert feet. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, I, I, I know. I, I, I picked up what you were throwing down. Oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Um, uh, is Lulu, is Lulu here with us? Yes, I, Lulu's, Lulu's with you, yes. Uh, hey, Lulu. Um, so we're here. Do you recognize any of this? She's actually mesmerized uh, looking at the Bidding Citadel. And she l- looks back at you startled and pops a little bubble from her trunk. And okay. says, oh, yeah, this is it. It's different than I remember. It's a little scabby. Uh, scabbier than one would imagine, perhaps. Yeah, there's not much time left. The, 
the only entrance I recall is at the bottom. At the bottom? Like of the hill? Or the building? The building. Oh. All the way at the bottom. All right. Well, four, follow Lulu's lead, I guess. Let's shoot our way through the scab. All right. Four, what are you going to do? Why do we not break the chains to let the building escape the scab? You probably, assuming that the other chains from Avernus needed particular rods, I doubt you have those. Oh, the rods specific to those exact chains. Is oh, look what I have in my inventory. It's so weird, but it says Citadel rods. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Can we drive through a window? You can try to do whatever you'd like. Maybe we get as close as we can in the tour mine tour. Yeah. Drive up the side of the scab. <laughs> So there's a pool of blood in front of the, as uh, blood and pus oozes out of the scab. Um, you, it's about half the height of the Tormentor, so you could potentially make it to the scab. Climbing it, probably not with the Tormentor. Everybody oh. out? Use the Tormentor as a boat to get to the scab. Okay, all right, four, inspiration. So four, okay. at full gas, you, it's, it, it's, it's, imagine taking a Jeep through like a swamp and, and, and quickly, the wheels, the treads become overladen with blood and other sticky substances. And you make it all the way to the scab, and then it seizes. I believe this is our stop. Really smart, Four. Good job. Avernus has not damaged my intelligence as much as other members of the party. Yeah, no, no don't finish that sentence. <laughs> we know where that's going. <laughs> we know we're dumb. It's okay. <laughs> you're not dumb. You're just stricken. Um, does that, I could fly up to the top and see if I can get in through one of the windows. Break in through one of the windows. Okay. Sure. Are you, so you're all departing the dormitory? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Another hatch. You open up a hatch, you, have to, you can't open the back because it's basically in the pool of blood. And the blood seems to, as it hits the side of the Tormentor, uh, it makes like a sort of acidic sound. Uh, and so you climb up to on top of the Tormentor, can jump off onto the scab. And when you do it, it has a weird squishy sound when you jump on top of it. Um, or, is it acidic? Is it eating the, the Tormentor? Is it parked somewhere else? It doesn't seem to be, no. Remember, the Tormentor is made of infernal iron, which is made from Avertus itself, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can we, like, tie it up so it doesn't sink away? I'm like, it's only half inundated, so imagine, like, it's just in, like, quick, no, not okay. quick, some kind of, yeah. A mud puddle. Ex thank you. Thank you for it, yes. I, out of an abundance of caution, I removed my communication device and put it in my bag of holding. Okay. <laughs> you can do that. And Anatoly. Uh, you take to the to the front, fly up with your boot with your winged boots, and examine the top of the what's remaining of the citadel. What you see are tarnished but were once beautiful uh, glass stained windows, and like you find like inside like a church or a temple. Um, but even as you try to knock on it. Um, or even with your sword hand, it seems completely impen impenetrable. As in, there's no way to get there's no way to get in, or there's no way for Avernus to even like defeat this thing without just taking it down completely. Okay. I fly back down. Okay. I don't think we're going to be able to get in through the top. Anatoly, you had like one job. Entering in the rear is our only option, then. Anatoly, give me a intelligence check with proficiency. To recall oh, something. Ed, he's dumb. No, I'm not. I'm not wise. <laughs> you no, know, he's not dumb, thanks to judgment. Judgment <laughs> undumped him. I regret it now, though. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
With advantage, you said? No, proficiency, if you don't. Oh, 20. 20? Oh, wow, nice. You put two and two together suddenly, based on what you heard and what you've seen, and you go back to your initial idea that maybe cutting through might be the best way. I think we're gonna have to cut through the scab. I know it's gonna be bloody, I know it's gonna be pussy, mm. and I know we're probably going to throw up in our mouths or on each other. But I see that as the only way that we are getting in. Lulu, do you remember where the entrance was? Mm. So that we can go to that location and cut there. The less pus we have to wade through, the better. She takes her trunk and sort of uses like a dowsing rod and aims downward, straight up, like basically straight out, straight ahead. So if you're, imagine you're at the bottom of the scab here, mm-hmm. straight on. Okay. Drugs or wings. Um. Uh, please. Does anyone have the ability to mold earth, perhaps? I have How about my um, staff thing that shoots uh, some- Oh wait, Boris, yeah. wait, are you telling us to move? Stand aside, please. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, what element would you like to use for your bullets? Um, we shall do lightning. It'll carterize. Okay, so four aims his repeating handgun. It sounds like a buzzsaw, and it's just it's shooting out magical bullets. Um, sorry, casings and. <laughs> As he seals himself, he has to put his, he keeps shooting and shooting and shooting, and he has to put his uh, sort of foot back on the Tormentor to give him some more. Uh, And after some debris shoots out, and finally the gun spins, it winds down, and you've done nothing to this gap. (laughs) It felt good, though. Hey, does Gary have any ideas? Gary. Hmm. You called. <laughs> hey, Gary, how do we get through this scab thing? Um, do you want me to just tell you? Yes, I want you to tell me. I don't want you to act it out for me. I want you to tell me. Okay. I want a funny anecdote. Yeah, I want a funny anecdote. Also, Gary, you're really hot when you're, like, not in the shield. I know. If somebody would free me. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I just wanted you to know that. <sighs> Thank you, Des. Due to your compliment, I'll give it to you nice and easy. The scab is made from Avernus itself. You can use something from Avernus to cut through it. That's it. Something of infernal iron, perhaps. Okay. Run the tormentor into it. Sovereignty. Wait, I have an I idea. Gary? Can I use Gary? Wait, what about Gary? <laughs> Aren't there a common core? Don't we have like cross, not crossbows? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, let's. Okay. That's what the, I was going to say. The harpoons. The harpoons. Can let's we use shoot them? the harpoon through? Yes, the harpoons are made of lightning. That definitely works. What are you made out of, Gary? I'm made out of brilliance, acting Dude. exuberance. I want to hit the scab with this shield. Do it, do it. <laughs> Ow! Sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Okay, should we just, like, run the Tormentor into the... What if we put some of the, um... The, the stuff that makes it go fast? What is it called? The yeah, cord. Oh, yeah. yeah, the demon, the demon uh, acre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have... You can ram a scab with the, our only mode of We can't ram it, though. We got as close to it as we could, right? What if we dig it out and try again? Why don't we just shoot the spear thing at it and see if that works. Yeah. Lightning. The lightning spear will work. It will work just as well as for lightning bullets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. One of you has a secret that might work. Work. Goodbye. I'm gonna, I open my bag and I'm gonna start looking through it. What do I have? Who has mm-hmm. secrets? I want to look around the area. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, in this picture, I can see there's like a lot of like corpses and shit. Yes. Um, 
There even seems to be some sort of weapon piercing one of the corpses. Yes. Um, are these weapons made from the same kind of steel? Perception. I have a perception of 11. Uh, total? Okay. Uh, give me then a history check also, please. All right, now we're talking my alley. Mm-hmm. 22. You decipher that the weapons and all the rest of these decayed corpses were probably from the mix of corpses here, the cadavers or whatever, the bones. It seems like devils fighting demons. And the devils were the ones protecting the scab, if you will. But the devil's weapons, yes, are made of infernal iron, as is Anatoly's sword arm, as is the yeah. Tormentor, well, etc. I was I was literally just about to say, let me try, let me try, because my sword arm's made of that. Do Hold it. your horses. I order all of my skeletons off of the vehicle. Okay. I ordered them to pick up the weapons and bits of armor and use them as scoops and to begin digging. Okay, as the undead jump off the Tormentor, they begin to dissolve in the blood acid. That's amazing. Okay, I'm just going to levitate off the ground with my little flying boots above the blood acid, and I'm going to start cutting through. All right. I'm sorry your army was destroyed. You can pull them out. I'm just saying. It's clear to you that they are dissolving quickly. All right. Climb back on, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they, they quickly jump down. They're like, we're burning. And your undead hop back up. They'll take one point of damage uh, with a quick reaction. And Anatoly, you get out your sword arm. And without <laughs> anybody's consent, you begin chopping through, and, chopping through the scab. And blood and gut shoots out as there's no resistance. It's like a knife through butter. Everybody who is not paying attention is now covered somewhat in this blood nope. and pus. Yeah, let's go. So you cut oh, and you oh, just oh, the cutting through. And what's up for? The prize up against the torment or ways off. I got recalled back. Okay, that's fine. Okay. You you cut through and it's like cutting through a a jungle of flesh basically. And it makes this gross sound as you cut through. As you cut through, flesh jungle. And more and more and more. You cut through, cut through, cut through. Uh, I need you to give me a Constitution check, please, as it's quickly exhausting you. Ooh, that's not good. You get a plus three because you're near me. Okay, that's better. Um, Twelve. All right, you get. Can I cast guidance on myself? Sure. He's like, hold on. <laughs> Sixteen. <laughs> you want to try to cut all the way to the end? Just like keep on going. Yeah, I just want to go at it. Okay, with that check, I'm only going to give you one level of exhaustion, but you do finally <sighs> cut through, cut through, make like a weird tunnel of slashes that basically makes it where you see. It it breaks open into a small adjoining area in front of a door. Fleshy tunnel. And that's uh, uh, one level of exhaustion is disadvantage on all ability checks and saving. Correct. Yeah. Great. Whew, you wow, welcome, Anatoly. everyone. And I spit pus. I spit pus on the ground. Oh, right, you're just covered in blood and guts. <laughs> blood and, and pus. <laughs> It's rather moist in here. Ooh, ew, don't ever say that again. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna kind of walk through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone heading in towards the bleeding yeah. center. Yeah. Um, do we want to? Hey, hey, like Ray and like Lulu, twenty six, all our friends. They want to come with us just in case. They're all ready to fight. Yes, and they do not oh, want to stay in the tournament. So all yeah. three. With you. I, use my, I use my shield as an umbrella for 26. <laughs> she looks at you uh, in the equivalent of construct sort of the uh, dovey eyes or whatever. 
Exactly the heart eye emoji. Heart eye emoji, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see Thor doing this and I immediately copy him with Gary, despite whatever protests Gary has for this. Nice. Now you just you just hear something <laughs> from the shield. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is nice. All right. It's you managed to take away as much of the blood and pus as you can and finally make it uh, inside. Who has a light source and or dark vision? I have dark vision. Well, no, I have my goggles. But. I have dark. Oh, I have dark vision. Most of us have oh, dark I'm vision. I'm going to transform. Okay. <laughs> Retro. She has right. an extra one of those now. So. Do we all have dark vision then? You've made it to. Oh, but not the ability. Oh. Yeah. So you've made it to the Bleeding Citadel, the main entrance, it seems like. It's a. And, and it's maybe one or two meters away from the scab. It's like the radiant energy is sort of pushing away the scab a little bit, and that's where you can be for now. And in front of you are brass double doors with a relief image uh, depicting a blindfolded angel wielding a sword, an uh, image you've seen before. And carved into the door are beautiful gold inlaid runes. Does anyone speak or know Celestial? No, but I can cast Comprehend Languages. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna cast that really quickly. So basically for the duration, you uh, understand the literal meaning of any um, language, written or spoken. Uh, I've, so I have to go up and I'll go up to the doorway and say, Sovereignty, like, isn't this your mom? And I put my hands on the runes to start to read. Okay. You take your hand and almost uh, imagine it like yeah. braille as you brush across the runes that each activate to you and mm -hmm. you read that in Celestial that says, against evil we stand united. Only the pure of heart can part the holy gates. It says, against evil we stand united. Only the good. I, I back up. Only, what is it? only the pure of heart can part these holy gates. Only the pure of heart can part these holy gates. Amen. I walk Amen. up with 26 and we push on the door. Okay, 26 follows uh, your lead and you take all your mechanical being and push and 26 follows your lead and pushes you might. And all you do is sort of um, spin your wheels basically as it were. Mm. And to know we are not good enough. I have a feeling the rest of you will fail as well. I have a feeling we should just cut to Lulu doing it, because the rest of us won't. Lulu perks up for a moment, and her ears flutter. Yeah, Lulu, I think you should try to open the door, because the rest of us... Um, probably not. I can do it! <laughs> <laughs> yes, the most good guy in the team! <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm trying, go ahead. Go ahead, Anatoly. Yeah, sure, I'll try to open the door. <laughs> okay, you get close to the door and are immediately, a, a force pushes you back uh, into, the, into the scab. So you're now like, like you know in the, in the cartoons where you push back, it's just a silhouette of you, like that, plastered into the scab. Good job, Anatoly. Anybody else wanna try? Such an interesting reaction. One of us has a wife who's a rather good person. Oh, yes. I turned to Rhea. Mm -hmm. Well, they say I married up. <laughs> you want to give it a go? She, she giggles and says, I don't think it would be right for me. And she looks at you, Sovereignty. Okay. Lulu and Sovereignty? Sovereignty? I mean, <laughs> like yeah. Force said, if he can't open the door, I don't know. But that is your mom. Lulu looks up and says, Sovereignty, you may be able to open the door, I think. You're half good? I'll try it with my purest of thoughts. <laughs> uh, for, uh, Lulu looks at you, Four, and says, It's about the pure of heart, Four. Oh. She looks back over. Sovereignty, will you fight for the people of Faerun? for your friends and family, for those you might not ever know? That's what I've been doing this whole time. Lulu nods 
and then looks at the whole group. Well, I see your conviction, Sovereignty, but someone has to vouch for you. A second, if you will. Me, that's me. That's you? When I was a young girl on a pirate ship, they bullied me. It's a sad story. I was very bullied by a lot of the, the you know, the people who like swab the poop deck. Like, I think they were. Anyways, Sovereignty always had my back and she protected me when she like didn't really know me and then we became friends. So you I will be her second in a duel against the door. Okay. Lulu seems happy and satisfied and she does a little bit of a circle, flying, a flying barrel roll and says, okay, you'll need to read this. And she looks at you. And she conjures with she conjures with her trunk some celestial runes. Okay. You can still read, right? Yeah, I ha- it, it lasts an hour. Yeah. Okay. So she'll need you to read this for sovereignty. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. She is pure in heart and organized chaos in soul. Ooh, that's cute. Love is her native tongue, but it is not spoken from her lips. It screams from within. She is a beacon of hope in a cascading world of despair. And then you hear the doors begin to open. Poetry. And it's just light coming out, spilling out of this doorway. As with all of Dessa's performances, Sovereignty lets out a tear. <laughs> I walk up and give the door a little kick. Okay, okay. you give the door a little kick? <laughs> personally, for it's probably because you just didn't have like a physical heart because you're a construct. That's probably the only reason. It's like semantics, you know? You have a point, Dess. Thank you. You're welcome. We all we <laughs> walk through the door! Everyone through the door? Yes. Even you, Anatoly? Yikes. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I crawl my way through the goo and pus again, and um, yeah. Okay, everyone goes in. Anatoly, you're not stopped. And you enter the Bleeding Citadel. As yes. the light envelops you, it's warm, lovely, and burns away all the blood and guts and pus all your, all your clothes and armor completely. And the restorative energy takes, brings life to all your numb muscles. Anything that was feeling bad has now been made hail. So you all get the equivalent of a long rest. Uh, Thanks, Does Anatoly's exhaustion go away? Yes, your ex- exhaustion also goes away. Ah, oh, I feel so much better. And inside, immediately inside, you see, Sovereignty, a familiar, a familiar image, a familiar place. Pillars line a room. Seems to be the only room here. And in the center, <laughs> epic. One blue sword. Epic. Embedded in stone atop a dais. Sword in the stone. Yes. Hey, I've right. seen this before. I had remember just when you were counting sheep, and I didn't dream about sheep. I dreamed about this instead. No, you dreamed about Gary. We're not going to talk about it anymore. Sovereignty. But also this, which was sort of seems sort of important now. Yeah, it does though. You're right. You're right. Sorry, I didn't mean to get mad at you. It's just a sensitive topic. <laughs> <laughs> Luna was fluttering. She's so happy, uncontrollably happy. Uh, well, good you. call, Lulu. Good call. Um, does anything happen if we go towards it? What did you say for? I, said, I give Sovereignty a little push in the back towards the sword. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Inspiration for. Okay, Sovereignty, you're pushed forward. Would you like to continue? Yeah. Okay, you take some steps. And the marble floor echoes, and the, there's no other sounds than your, your, you know, the uh, the heels of your plate mail clinking, clinking as you make your way forward. And you're close to the sword when 
an apparition appear, appears before you, blocking it. No. You see the translucent image of a woman who is wearing Hellrider robes and armor, bearing two thin scars across her cheeks. She holds a ceremonial sword in one hand and a reliquary of ashes in another. Oh. Oh, sort of, uh, she floats above you. Hey. I'm, I'm not Rhea. Do you, do you know who that is? She looks at you and says, yes, that's, that's General, that's General Yale. The first general of Zeriel's Hellrider army. Oh. Oh, shit. Is she oh. dead? I think she, yes, she died on the assault, as did Haruman and the others. Uh, I will bow my head. It's like a respect sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> as you bow her head, this form, which you've overheard Rhea speaking louder than she meant to be, than she meant to, takes a military pose, you know, sort of hands behind back, uh, and she poses, and she sort of sets up like a, uh, what is it, at attention, sort of, for? At ease. At ease, whatever, uh, pose. And she looks at you, sovereignty, and has this expressionless face with just white eyes and, and scans the room for your other friends. And she turns to you. And, yeah, four? Not oh, nice. you all wait. <laughs> she says, I am Yale, first general of Zeriel's Hellrider army. My husband, General Harman, informed me of your coming and sends good tidings of your deeds. Sovereignty, you and your friends seek the sword. Yes. Why? Um, because we want to help Ultra, we have a long list. Ultrarel, Zeriel, um, I, I don't, like a lot. We want to help. She smiles a little bit. She says, do not fear. I am only here to help. You have indeed passed many trials, and you alone, Sovereignty, are worthy to wield, wield the sword. I don't know about all of that. You are. But there is one caveat. What is it? I don't think you ask her what it is. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the caveat? The wielder of this sword will receive the power of a god. Yet, they will no longer be who they once were. Um, what is that? Clarification. Dumb it down. A lot of stuff has happened in Avernus, and I don't know what that means. I understand, young sovereignty. They will become a force for the powers of good and justice. And should they ever stray from this path, the power will be sealed away for them to them forever. Okay, that seems fine. I feel like that's other stuff's not really my jam. So then, knowing this, you willingly willingly seek the sword? Y yes. Good. Now, you have but one task remaining. The demon lord Yenogu seeks to consume the sword, and he is close. You must battle him in the plane of dreams, for if not, he will have already consumed it. We met his dog. <laughs> Bark. I was like a follower who was a dog, and then I killed him. Don't listen to me. I'm fine. Um, it's cool. It's cool. Plane of dreams. Okay. Do we know how do we get there? Do I do the sword thing first? Um, is it like a time travel thing? Lulu can take you there to the plane of dreams. The sword has already been devoured. If you do not stop, Demon Lord Kinogu. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. Um. Will you take on this final challenge? To like 
defeat Yunogu, get the sword, then we save Altarel. Is that the plan? Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm not gonna make that choice for my team, but I'm in. Ah, oh, what the hell? A boat, yes! Do it, do it, do it! Have the power of a god, but like a good god. I grab Rhea's hand. We're in. All right, she grabs your hand too. Four, seeing uh, 26, seeing Fenris and Rhea hold hands. She awkwardly goes to hold your hand. I look down and I go ahead and return the gesture after I feel my hand being touched. Okay, that just leaves judgment. You must hold hands with Anatoly now. Or Ma- Mambo. Hey, hey, why don't we just have, so it's not like weird, why don't we have, we can both hold Mambo's hand. Like, he can stand in between us. <laughs> that sounds fine to me. Yes. I don't want to hold your sword anyways. <laughs> Meta talk. Wait, sorry, power. what? Meta talk. Godly powers being acquired. Judgment. Thing. Okay, I'm done. Oh, the power of the, uh, you need the power of a god, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, All it's, right. it's unanimous yeah. then. Not a sovereign key, sounds good, doesn't it? Lulu, when you're ready. Lulu looks up sort of hesitating for a moment and then something clicks and she begins to spray out bubbles, 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 and then they pop, 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 pop. and you are no longer inside the Bleeding Citadel inside the temple. But rather, in a town, a town that's engulfed in flames. Cottages, fields, trees, everything on fire. There's a broken sign, a broken wooden sign on the ground that reveals the settlement's name, it's Idol Glen. And you hear shrieking of townsfolk uh, out in the distance, you're surrounded by a, a mist, a haze, uh, all around this town. And then you also hear some cackling of demons and gnolls. All right, team, let's get ready to rumble. Uh, see any of the demons and gnolls. You do not. So imagine this dream world, like when you had previously in the dream world with Lulu, it was sort of like an invisible barrier mist around it. And what you were able to see is the sort of main uh, yard, uh, main square of this town. And there's a, all the homes and everything, cottages are all on fire. Um, other than what looks to be a um, meeting hall of sorts by what looks to be, if you look down by a statue of Zario. Uh, I'm going to cast Armor of Agathis really quickly. Agathis, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So you'll see like a ray of frost kind of push out and then come back in on my Mm -hmm. body. How long do we have to um, prepare? Well, you're not sure. Again, you hear a cackling and the only thing that seems to be calling you is again the statue down just of maybe 20 30 feet down a road mm-hmm. of zario and a again a town meeting hall sort of sort of place right beyond it Do team should um, we move down there i put my hand on sovereignty's back and cast haste on her and kind of give her a push and okay. also begin moving forward myself yeah. Hey, I like Four taking initiative on this. Nice, nice. Let's move. Yes, Four, lead the way. You see that 26? He, 20, four is like always the leader. You know, Four is he's the leader all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just follow him. She's just looking four. at him en- enamored. Just I can't believe how brave he is. As we're running uh, in, I'm going to uh, cast False Life on myself. Okay. Give myself some temporary hit points. All right. You all begin to prepare yourself. If there's anything quick you'd like to do, let me know. You approach the statue of Zariel. And at that time, you see, it looks like a cleric of some kind, uh, run out of the town hall and open the doors, quickly shut them. And inside the town hall, you see dozens of 
citizens of you know people of citizens of this town. Or go talk to her. Or the cleric, him, them. Uh huh. Well, did it make sense for me to cast uh, Sunbeam at the statue, or no? The statue seems to be glowing, actually, and you see the text as you're, as you're looking at it, um, Fenris, there's some text in common you can read. It says, Zeriel, guardian of Idle Glen, offer, player, offer prayers to Lathander, and his light will shield thee. Everybody pray to Lathander! <laughs> so this is a statue of Zeriel, again, as an angel. You've seen one time before. Dear Lathander, uh, watch out for us. We're a cool group of performers. Um, this is uh, Zeriel's daughter. Amen. Okay, you're all blessed. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean. Amen. You followed the rules. What is the blessed condition give Plus you? Plus 1d4 to hit. Yeah. Plus I'm not sure if it's for spells. It may just be for Hashtag blast. Axe. Someone could double check that for me. Here. I'll look. Oh, yeah, that's foul. It's, uh, oh. it's attack rolls or saving throws. Okay, so just not spell attacks, just attacks? It just says attack rolls or saving throws. There, there are spells that have attack rolls. And yeah, spells so spells have attack rolls in that. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh. Okay, so this four, you're up, you're up front, and 26 is holding your hand, and this person comes up. Is, is, they, they get closer, she gets closer. They're wearing robes of Lathander, and they're obviously very freaked out about the situation. The whole town is on fire, and again, you hear cackling all throughout outside the mist. It's getting closer. Where are the enemies? So she looks at you all, and she spots actually Rhea, and she says, Oh, good! You're with the Hellriders! You finally arrived to save us! Thank Lathander! And uh, Rhea looks around and he's not sure what to say. Um, I'm sorry? She says, the, the demons will be here soon. You must help us. The Hell Riders are on their way, but it may be too late. The Hell Riders are. Oh no, it's just us. Uh. Ah! Well, it's something. I'll fight alongside you. Wait. In the meantime, anybody have proficiency in history? Hi. Okay, oh, judgment. No. Judgment does everything. Why do I even look? Like, what judgment, is, judgment is the. <laughs> okay, both of you. Both of you. He's a real. He's the intelligence VIP. So yeah, history intelligence. Please roll if you have proficiency with it. I'm going to use inspiration. Okay. I roll four. All right. And I want to roll four. Yeah, my last roll was my highest, and it was still only a 12 total. 12? I rolled um, really bad ones. So. I rolled an 11, so 20. 20? Okay, wow. well, that'll do. Before you get an inkling of this, but judgment, you kind of know the whole story here. You quickly examine the architecture, what's remaining of it anyway, and it seems to resemble, there's just hints that this seems to be the architecture of... The Baldur's Gate, Elturel area, probably like a hundred years ago, uh, back when the Hellriders were first, a hundred some years ago, back when the Hellriders were first um, put into effect. I see. Seems this dream is in the past. Wait, we're in the past? Yes, this is an event that actually happened in the past. Inspiration judgment. So if we change the course of history, things will be different then. Except for this is a dream desk. Okay, anything else you want to do before this begins as you start to see figures come out of the mist? Um, can I use Gary to cast haste on Fenris? Sure. I feel like that helps. And Anatoly? Okay. If you have haste, you do. you have an extra action not for spells but you can do an extra you can do one extra attack it's actually two times movement plus two ac add that on deck saves and plus one action for a minute okay perfect that's on, wow that's amazing yeah that's just on sovereignty for that reason so but you cannot use it for spell casting that i know for sure okay it, uh, 
I'm ready. Let's go. We're going to fight some the, our pasts, past selves. The all past. right. You all converge around the statue as demons, those weird demon-like dogs, right? They're gnolls, but imagine uh, gnolls, but totally deformed as demons are, as all the abyssal sort of creatures you've seen have different number of arms, eyes, legs. They're different skin color. They're just all around evil and, and <laughs> gross, basically. Uh, and so you see packs of these uh, abyssal gnolls rush forward, screeching. Behind them, a couple bigger demons. And then through the mist is Yenogu, the demon lord Yenogu himself. Oh, yikes. This is uh, a big fight. Okay. Here is the setting. Okay. Idle Glen. Ow. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Nogu appears in the back. It's a vaguely quasi no like creature. It's about 20 feet tall uh, with a grinning skull like face and a, a pair of leering, burning emerald eyes atop a, it seems to be an emaciated, leathery, tough form. There's a main yellow crest of fur that goes from his sort of head all the way down to his tail and some pale and gray skin. And his canine chest is armored and decorated with the flayed skin of enemies. In his hand, he wields a three-headed flail, in his paw, I should say, and then the other one, he points in direction and he bellows. Pathetic, you lot would attempt to stop the ruler of ruin, destruction and consumption are the only things that will feed our hunger. The abyss rules all, and you will be butchered in its name. Time to roll initiative. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> yes. Ooh, epic. Who's the blue blob next to us? Next That's, to uh, that is the Judgment's Horde of Undead. Oh, got it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah. shit, they got in here too? What? The skeletons are all snoozing. Are they snoozing? They're oh. in a dream. Oh, they're, they're, your physicality and mentality is transported to the dream world. So everything you can do. Mambo here too, right? Mimit, yeah, Mambo. Okay, so here's what we got. Sovereignty, yeah, sorry, you. Anatoly, Fenris, Rhea, Des. And we, of course, we have Judgment with Mambo. Here's 26, Perfect. four, and Lulu. So amazing. Are, yeah, all the gnolls. Uh, and you have two options here before you roll initiative. You can either defeat the demon lord or defend the statue. What if we do both? Best outcome? You don't die? I'm not sure. All right. Uh, initiatives. Uh, Des 21. Oh yeah, Death 21, Sovereignty. Uh, 11. 11, Fenris. 15. 18. 16. 16, Anatoly. Three. Three, Judgment. 19. 19, you can't take that initiative anymore. Four. I wasted my only 20 of the night, so I got 25 <laughs> for initiative. 25, okay. Here's a breakdown of this battle against the Demon Lord, and this is gonna hurt. Is it? All right. Initiatives are as follows. So I'm going to pair you with your NPC others, if you will. Mm -hmm. So whenever your initiative, your NPC equivalent is going to go right after you. And all right. So initiative count is four. Deaths. Yes. Then all the small abyssal nose. Then judgment. Then the two spellcasting demons in the back. Okay. Then Fenris. Then Sovereignty. And then Yenogu. Who's Lulu paired with Sovereignty? Lulu will be paired with Sovereignty, yes. Thank you. Okay. What about uh, Rhea and 26? Rhea's gonna be with you, I'll go after you, Fenris, and then 26 will go after four. Okay, four, you're at the top. So again, protect the statue, or defeat Yanogu, or die trying. 
No, we're gonna defeat him. Can I'm assuming you? I'm last, right? You are last, yeah, sorry. <laughs> LOL. With my knowledge of whatever knowledge I have of these kind of creatures, what element would I think would be most effective? Uh, Radiant. But I don't think Arcane Weapon could do that. So what's my next best choice? Uh, your Not choice. Fire. Oh, fire probably, yeah. Fire? No, fire's a bad idea. That's what I thought, yeah. Thunder. Okay. Thunder. Alrighty. So, what's my range here? About to get loud. Some kind of range. Mm -hmm. uh, we gotta give you little glowing things to the statue. So, what's the marking thing? There it is. So, I will move the little orange axis. Okay. You jump around, sort of next to the statue. Yep. And I'm going to fire on our demon friend in the back. The demon lord? Yep. Okay. You jump into the statue, brace yourself, and... I can't even... I can't make minigun sound effects. I can't... Yeah, how about that? Okay. And you envelop him with many, many bullets. Okay. Oh. I'm using all three of my attacks against him. Okay. So, uh, two 22s. Hit. And a 17. Misses. Okay. Oh, one dice. Okay, so you, you spray around, and many of your bullets connect. The first Piercing. attack is a total of 17. Okay. And the second one is a total of 18. Total of 18. Okay. All right. The bullets sort of hit his flesh and impact, but don't fully go in. Uh, and he looks at you and roars and flexes, and the bullets pop out. Uh, oh, sorry. Up. But I my plus damage. So both those are plus nine. Okay. So 18 total more? Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, I'm going to, let's see here. And Dash, you're up next. Mm-hmm. So once again, if the statue is um, destroyed, you may lose. I'm just gonna hang out. Hang out? Okay. I've got a meat shield in front of me. Ha! <laughs> okay, Des. Uh, yeah, Des, you're up. Uh, what about 26? 26, thank you. What I need to do is just add them to the names here. Good idea. All right, 26 gets out her electrical morning star and cracks it and rushes down, rushes up through the fire and she runs forward sort of enemy time. You hear sort of cogs and stuff like whirring as she runs forward and jumps up in the air and hits this knoll electrifying him into a crisp. Nice. And that's her turn. Good job, 26. She looks at you and smiles widely. Her eyes get like really big. She can smile. I'm jealous. Kind of. You assume it's a smile. Hmm. Cheers. All right, I'm up. Ready to rumble. Okay, so I'm going to basically... I think I'm going to... Uh, okay, I'm going to put my body between... Well, I'm gonna put myself between basically four and the Lulu. Okay. Um, to protect the uh, statue as much as possible. Uh, then I'm going to cast um, Thickening Radiance. And basically I'm going to cast it as a 30 foot uh, radius sphere. Uh, let's say where these yellow stars are over here so I can kind of hit everybody. Or if it was here, I guess, actually the second one. Thickening Radiance? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Where the star is? Yep. So it's going to hit the big guy, all these guys. It says a 30-foot radius. So let's stamp 
So like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It probably is going to hit pretty much. Yes, yeah, so you can hit every. Literally everything here. 20, 30, yeah, except for this guy. That guy. And, and this guy right next to us on the left at the bottom. Correct, yes. But all these guys, so basically what it is, it's a dim uh, greenish light. So I'm going to um, basically push out this light out of me, and it's going to be going out in the shape of uh, music notes. Let's make a swirling sphere enveloping all of these uh, bad guys, these swirling music notes that are green and sickly. Um, and basically, if a creature moves into that area for the first time or starts its turn there, uh, that creature must succeed a constitution saving throw or take 4d10 radiant damage and suffer one level of exhaustion. Okay, keep in mind that includes you guys too. Yeah, so be careful, guys, because it's a big sphere going in there. I guess I didn't really think about that in terms of our up-close rangers. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but... Oh, crap. I didn't think about that. Sorry, guys. You're fine. I have plan. Okay, yeah, I didn't think I just was like, yes, 40, 10 radiant. Uh... Yeah, but basically the light and the levels of exhaustion go away when this... Yeah, no. Oh, crap. Sorry, guys. Okay, so this whole area until death loses concentration, if you start your turn there, uh, you'll take damage. Radiant. Uh, that might not have been the smartest thing I could have done. Oops. Oh, well. Face me too late. Okay, so it envelops her music notes, and that whole area right now uh, is dangerous. So yeah. roll when it's their turn. Okay, anything else, Des? Um, yes, for my bonus action... Uh, I'm gonna use Mantle of Inspiration. So my, uh, you know, changeling white hair flows long and and fully in the wind uh, of the flames. And uh, my five friends are gonna be uh, all of the real people on screen. So sorry, NPCs. Uh, you will have your, uh, your full movements and te- plus five temporary hit points. Okay, you got it. And if who wants to move, if you're obviously everybody but Des, basically, if you want to move, where? Yes, Fenris? I would like to move smack dab in front of Anatoly and Sovereignty right in the middle, please. Okay. Like, right right there? Right there. Okay. Everyone, be prepared. Um, Oh. Yeah. Um, Okay, thank thank you for Yep, got it, got it. Thank you. This screen is great, DM. Good, awesome. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's very action-packed. I wish it was music, yeah. but I'll add it in post. <laughs> this is really cool, DM. Yeah. Looks great. Okay, who's next? Who else wants to move that has not yet? It was called on by Des. Oh, uh, I missed Sovereignty's reminder about her buff. How much damage? That'd be an extra six for me. Okay, I got it. I got it right now. No one else has done damage yet. Okay, any other movements? Speak now or hold your peace. Fenris, are you planning a thing? Yes. Okay, I'm not going to get in front of you. Yes, nobody gets in front of me. Um, I will... Did you have me move as well? No, I yeah. I had literally every, every, all of you. I get five people. I'll pop do. up on the roof to the right there. This roof here? Yeah, a little closer to the demons. Okay. All right, fire is raining down, so. Cool. Anyone else want to move? Uh, will I be in your way if I move to the demons, the dogs at the bottom? Runners? Uh, The ones right in front of me or to the corner? Down here. No, you won't be. I know. Probably. Nope, not down there. Cool. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Are uh, you rush down, Sovereignty? Sure. That's everyone, right? Des, judgment, uh, moving. Judgment. Oh, judgment. You want to move? I'm not really sure there's anywhere that's safer for me, so no. DM, yeah. can yes. you, since, since there is no longer anyone behind me, can I be scooched back a little bit closer? Yeah, to of course, the no problem, right there? Yep, thank yeah, you. Yeah, perfect. Uh, you stand in defiance in front of the Statue of Zario. Okay, that's everybody. Anything else, Des? Uh, nope, that'll be it. Okay, Thank you. 
Then the gnolls rush forward. Well, they all have to take a constitution saving throw. That's right. So I'm going to roll as a group for them. Yeah. And they all fail. Okay, so give you 40, 10 radiant <laughs> damage. Heck yeah. Okay, this is what I get for expediting. Come to me. Amazing. This is perfect. I need them to stay just... Uh, cool, 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 cool. Okay, so that is... Thirty-four points. Of oh my radiant. God! He rolled forty ten for thirty-four points. Yeah, that was an amazing roll. Holy 34. cow! Okay. Yes, they all take a level of exhaustion. Yes, so they're disadvantage on uh, saving throws and future. Saving. Unless they move. Wait. Unless they move out of the sphere, though. Which they're going no, to. No, no, that's a lie. No, the spell ends. Nope, they all have a level of exhaustion. Okay, they start, and as soon as they start to move, they're shot by this uh, dim green sphere that uh, assaults them with radiant damage while taking a substantial amount of damage. <laughs> yeah. These two, this one, uh, these two sovereignty rush forward with their claws uh, and try to bite at you and just abyssal ooze dripping down their mouths and hunger. They get dis- what is disadvantage? I guess just a level of exhaustion disadvantage for attacks for them then? Nope. Oh, just ability checks. Hmm. Which ones are attacking? Uh, the ones at the bottom here. Oh, I see. I thought we were talking about the ones in the middle of the road. Not yet, not yet. They attack two times each, and there's just one hit on your sovereignty, and it pierces through your armor. Did they hit a 23? I'm sorry? Did they hit a 23? Yes, they do. Okay. I have all your ACs. Okay. <laughs> She's like, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I got that extra sweet haste bonus. All right. Oh, with a plus two. You were 21 before. Right. I'm 23 now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I hit that in mind, but it's still a hit. It was 19. Well, okay. I guess that much, but yeah. Um, yes, that's right. Who has the extra AC from Haste? Fenris and Sovereignty. So, and Anatoly. Yeah. Anatoly. So what are you, what are your, Fenris and Anatoly, what are your ACs now? With the Haste? Plus two from your Haste. Oh, it's only plus two? Okay, I got it. No, 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 I got it. I got it. 24. Yeah, I, I got it. I am at 23 when I'm transformed. Okay, so Sovereignty, both of them, they just, they, they just are hungry to get through to you. And this knoll here rushes in the back and throws itself onto the statue of Zario and begins to try to consume it, just claws at it and the stone just eats the stone. Uh, guys, I'm taking care of something up front so somebody else has got to cover the back of the statue. Okay, these other ones, and it's only because you're up top, you won't get an attack of opportunity on them. Uh, but one rushes towards you four. Actually, they're both gonna rush towards you as you're the first thing that catches your eye on the corner since you just started moving forward. And you're the first thing they you saw. They saw so four attacks. Okay, that's two hits, and then you'll take half damage from this from each attack here. Four. I uh, use my reaction to use shield. Okay, uh, you will then you can stop one of the attacks. That's fine. Okay. All right, the other one at half damage does seven points of piercing damage. Okay. okay. So, all the gnolls here charge forward towards uh, you, Fenris, since you're the operative candidate here. And 40's got to only reach here. Okay, all four of these reach you, uh, Fenris. Actually, I take that back. One of them's an attack. Your zombie horde. Does this? How dare you? Okay. Zombie horde. Veterans, and they all these gnolls are just shouting, hungry, dripping. Okay. Sovereignty, you have case on her as well, right? Yeah, so she's a 23, mm-hmm. correct? AC, so she's she's a 25 AC. You said 23 earlier. Uh, me, but she I has 20. Know. She has 23 because she's transformed. But if she has plus two, she has 25. That's right. Okay. So then, that's only two hits on you, Fenris, and one. We're so strong. On your horde. Judgment. But Fenris, you take a total of with your half damage, 10 points of piercing damage, and judgment. Your undead horde. Take, they, have, they have no resistance, right? 
uh, undead resistances. I mean, like resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, right? Uh, they're vulnerable to bludgeoning. Okay, so it's not bludgeoning, so they just take 16 points of damage. All right. Okay, and that ends the Noel's turn. Turns. Okay, Judgment, you're up. Okay, you guys left me really questionable area to attack here. I'm going to fly up just high enough to see over the top of the statue. Okay. All right. Is there some sort of elevation effect? I that? wish there was, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, wait, wait, here we go. Can we give you wings? <laughs> Is there wings? A grenade? Uh, Does that I make drink sense? Red Bull. And then, uh, <laughs> and grow wings. Yeah, uh, do there you go. Down, 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 down. Down, yeah, there's wings? Yeah, above the heart to the left, the broken heart. This? No! Oh, oh, that? Yeah, that that's that's cute. Like okay, now he has wings, so we know he's in fly. Nice. There you go. All right. So now that I have a view, I'm going to cast Circle of Death. Okay. Yes. Circle of Death has a range of 150 feet. Okay. For me to target. And I pick that point and it has a 60 foot radius. Okay, so you can pretty much hit, if you target right here in the middle, kind of like Destin, you can hit pretty much everything, right? 10, 15, 20. I, I want to make sure not to hit party members. Yeah. What type of damage is that? Is it a 60 foot radius or a 60 foot diameter? Yeah, what is radius. it? Radius. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. You need to cast it on like the boss. Yeah, cast on the boss, basically, and you still hit sovereignty. If you want to hit all these gnolls in front. I mean, what if I move it up a little? Yeah, what if you move to the top left of the screen? Yeah, Judgment, totally. Are you about to do necrotic damage? Yes. They will be immune to that. How do I know this? How do you know that? Because they're demons. We've fought demons like six times so far. <laughs> and they were they were immune to fire. I thought they were immune to necrotic and fire. They were. They weren't immune, they were resistant. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm casting a spell. Yeah, no. I'm saying, if you moved it up, you could, yeah. If do you are you are you want to hit all four of these gnolls? Is that what you're trying to do? That's the idea. I'd like to hit as many as possible. You would hit Anatoly or Sovereignty, no matter how you did it. If you went it up or down or left or right, so it's your call. If you put it up here, he's gonna be in the radius. Hmm. That jerk. I don't know. Hmm. I, mean, I think are you resistant to necrotic Anatoly? No. I wouldn't know that if he was. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I'll move back next turn. No, uh, it's too late for that. This is not. This is not going to stay. This is one attack only. Um, I'll leave it back then, so it's only like the the first three nulls. Correct. Whenever they get hit. And there's two demon spellcasters and the demon lord. Yeah, you can yeah. do that. All right. So they all need to make a Constitution saving throw. Okay. All right, Constitution saving throw. Whoopsies. Go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. So Judgment flies up, <sighs> creates a sphere of negative energy that shoots out and it travels and stops and expands and explodes in a huge radius. 33 damage to all okay, of them. 33 damage. Nice. All right, you have killed these two gnolls up front. Goodbye. All right, as they shadow in the chronic uh, damage. They sort of stop in place like a statue and then shatter uh, in black and purple shards. Right. Then I order my zombie horde with my bonus action to eat the knoll that's attacking the statue. Oh, okay, <laughs> so it turns around and how much damage does it do right now? Uh, it does 50. Okay, they devour, they absolutely just devour. So they, the Knowles, I think he looks over and all he sees is he's being, um, what happens in football and everybody jumps on top of the guy that has the Tackled. triangular ball? Body pile. He's being dogpiled? Yeah, dogpiled. That's what happens, but with zombies <laughs> and they're eating him and he's dead. Yum. Oh, yeah. And he's no longer, as the zombies get up, there's not even a trace of it left. Okay, and you have Mambo? All right, Mambo is going to lift up his rifle. <laughs> Finish everyone. <laughs> He's going to stand on his tiptoes and 
do a pirouette and fire three times. Wow, okay. All right. What are you going to shoot at, um, though? The first target is going to be the closest knoll in front of four. Okay. All right, that's fine. Go ahead. It has not been wounded yet. All right. That was a 14 to hit. 14 hits and miss. All right. His second attack is a 22. That's it. All right. He does 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage. All right. And he's there's out of pirouette. There. Shoots his pistols. And the slug. His third attack is a 19 to hit. 19 to hit. That's a hit. For 12 points of damage. One quick question. 12 points of damage. Yeah, four. Would the zombie part have encountered an attack for opportunity from the gnolls when it moved? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, two attacks of opportunities and then one for both of these gnolls. Yeah, thank you for following the rules. Not, not to screw the zombie horde over or anything, because they're kind of fun, but... Whatever, they're serving their purpose. <laughs> one's, a hit, one's a hit, sadly, uh, and that is 13 points of piercing damage. So the zombie hordes move away as the gnolls sort of try to claw at them. Just barely taking pieces out of your zombie hordes is... Um... The bad thing about that, though, is it lowers their damage from 50 to 40. That's still good enough to kill it. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So... That's your turn, right? That's it. Okay. These demon spellcasters fly up in the air, and they're taking damage as well. Uh, they need a table. Yeah. Do they... 30 to 34, right? No, 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 no. They just have to make a constitution saving throw. If they fail, they take the damage. They take okay. five to roll again, don't I? No, it's every turn, right? Because it's concentration. You haven't been hit yet. Constitution. Yeah, it's concentration. They have to succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 4d10 radiant damage. Right, you've already rolled the damage, which is 34, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just okay. Did they fail the con save throw? It's half or full? Is it like they make it, it's half? When they make it, they don't take the damage at all. Yeah, oh, okay. it says that creature must succeed or take 40 10. Got it. Okay, so clarification. So they both succeed from your. Oh, lame. Your spell okay. um, and they fly up in the air and they also cast Circle of Death, but on your party. Rude. Um, yeah, happy cats. So, no, actually, this is what they were going to cast. Then both are going to cast it? Yes, yeah, so they're both going to cast Circle of Death. Oh, God. Um, I'm going to use Counterspell on one of them. One of them, because you're actually to Counterspell. So you put up some, uh, as your reaction, some uh, sigils that... Wait, I cast Counterspell, too, as a reaction. Okay. All right, on the sure. other guy, I see saw, I see judgment after I just say the copycat. I'm like, oh, I want to be a copycat, and I do the same thing. <laughs> okay, so you both, as a demon three to cast the spell, they're, they're getting that energy sphere of negative energy sphere ready. Both of you, so you begin to put out your arm judgment and create these arcane shield, which shoots out and fizzles the spell, and then Des looks over and does the same. So you both are defending your party, uh, you know, with, these, with this arcane energy. Nice. Barriers. So both yes. the spells fizzle. Good job, you two. Yes! Look at this power judgment! That would have been 16 d6 damage to your whole party, so... Oh, no! Wait, do I have to make an ability check using your spellcasting ability, though? Hmm. Yeah, it is a high-level spell. Wait, if it's... Okay, if it is casting a spell of 4th level, how high is that spell that they're casting? Make an ability check using your spellcasting ability. To try to overcome what? Your spellcasting? We, we make the rule. What? Huh? So it's a DC of 15, and we make the rule with our spellcasting attack rule to try and cancel it. Okay. Wait, so their DC is 16, though, right? Because isn't it 10 plus the spell's level? It's a level 5 spell. Level 6 spell. It's Sorry. a level 6 spell. Yeah, oh, it is level 6. Okay. So six we zero. have to get higher than a 16? 16 or higher. For, it to, for, for us to actually cancel it out, right? Yes, so use your spell. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, I rolled a baby. I don't need to add my pluses. Okay, uh, however, what I'm going to do though, so I rolled a seven, but I'm going to use one of my lucky points. Mm -hmm. So when I use a lucky point, I get to roll an extra d20. All right. Hold on, what's, what's your attack roll though? Wait. What? I'm confused now. Yeah, what's, your plus, what's your plus to hit if you're attacking with magic? That's magic. Oh! The proficiency plus your spellcasting modifier. Or plus Wait, five. It's a, no, it's a 17. It's a 17 then. Okay, so you make it, and then you judge yeah, it. Yeah, he's lucky point. Thank you. My math was dumb. I rolled a 16 without counting bonuses, so we're good. All right, so that yeah, yeah. is you. exactly thank what you happens. Both. You both uh, stop the Great. spells and protect your team together. Together. Yes, look at Passing us go. Judgment, uh, Iron Curtain. <laughs> okay, and that's it for the spellcasters. They only cast one spell. Fenris, you're up. All right, I'm gonna give this a go. I'm gonna, um, I've got the rod that we use to get the unicorn out, and yes. I'm going to plant it smack dab in front of me, and I'm gonna cast motherfucking sunbeam. Yeah, okay. yes. And All I'm right. hopefully, because it's a, it's a uh, five feet wide and sixty feet long. I'm hopefully able to hit the first two guys in front of me, all the way back to the big guy. You can. You can fire right to the middle and probably annihilate all of them. So go ahead and roll your. Um, it is each creature must make a constitution constitution save. If failed, it takes six d eight radiant damage. So okay, take your roll your sixty eight radiant damage. Nice. Sorry, I'm borrowing some d8s here. It's okay. Uh, Yanogu makes a save, but the Renaults do not, so I'm assuming they're going to be fried. Okay. So, uh, oh, no, it wasn't successful for Yanogu, so he is not blinded. 30. Right, so Fenris braces herself, puts the dust crusher in front of her hand in front of her body. How much? 37. Oh, that's enough with how much Dust did before. And then it starts to charge up. And the hammer, the head of the hammer charges up a solar beam that engulfs and eradicates the two gnolls in front of, in front of her who melt. Whoa, oh my god. <laughs> just two. Just two. And in, the beam just lasts a long time. You hold, you hold it, you hold it, and finally uh, it gives way as the energy dissipates. Actually, it can be continuous because it's a concentration based. Um, so I'm gonna keep it up as long as I can. Yes. Um, you can fire another beam. I can fire another beam my next turn. Um, Actually, you have haste, so maybe you can ca you can fire another beam right now. Uh, no, because it's a spellcasting ability. No, because it just uses your action. Remember, it just says action. Oh action. shit. And yes. I have, I have, <laughs> I have three actions per turn, so I might as well just use it three times. Do it. Um, well, that, no, not quite. So no. right now, you because of haste, you use one of your actions. You can either do the attack action or a spell cast, or like a spell cast. This is equivalent of a spell casting action. Okay. So that's, that goes in lieu of your attacks. Unless okay. you want to use your haste, well, no, because you can't use your haste action. No, for you a spell. can do it one more time. You can just do it one more time. Basically, as it runs, as, yeah. Okay, so you I'm You can either do sunbeam again or attack one time. If I if I did sunbeam again, is there any chance I could eliminate the two guys in front of me? If you move, yeah. no, I don't think I should move. Um, just do it, just straight down the middle. I'll do it straight down the middle again. Oh, you only can hit Yunogu. Yes, and here's the thing: if the if the creature uh, makes a successful save, they still take half damage. Yeah, I, I wrote down the damage on them. Okay, perfect. Um, and so they're blinded. And uh, no, if they're if they pass the saving throw, they're not right. blind. You know who passed the saving throw. So I might as well hit it again, see if it goes. Okay. Yes, hit the big guy, do it. Big guy, I'll hit it if I can. Okay. So I'm just I'm just doing the save, right? That's it. Yep. He does make the save. Yeah. The demon lord is very very high save modifier. So, so uh, the first beam you fire out of your hammer. But the second beam, you can fire out of whatever, uh, because you're using your personal sort of uh, energy to fire it out. So if you want to fire it out of a hand, or out of your eyes, I don't care. I'll do that with my hand. Okay. All right, so you pull the hammer back, and then summon the energy, the sunbeam energy, again through your hand. You shoot it, and it does 
impact onto Yunogo, pushing him back, right? The radiant energy pushes him back. Uh, you hit him the first time on one shoulder, then the other, uh, but he pushes forward back against it, dissipating the sunbeam, but you do do the half damage. So essentially in all, he would have taken about 37 damage. Exactly. He did, yeah. Okay, yep. got it. So he, if he had made it, it would have been double. If he had not made it, it double that, but it's hard. Okay. So Fenris is just shooting out light beams all over the place. And you still have your bonus action, Fenris. You can bite somebody. Uh, let's go for whichever one of those dudes is closest to me. Okay. Do the top one. One of them. Um, the roll, I got to add my... Uh, Add that. Is Epic. It, yeah, the whatever that is. Um, 22 plus 4. 26 to hit. That's a hit. Okay. Damage. Um, and 10 for the damage. 10 for the damage. That's a 3 from Sovereignty. Uh, uh, I'm not close enough for that. Sorry, oh, I need to really? Oh, sorry. Never mind, I forgot you moved. Yeah, I'm gonna move back. <laughs> After firing the sunbeams, you quickly just go Arm! and bite at his head, uh, taking a chunk off and <laughs> spitting it out. Uh, but they continue. Wow, that guy's still alive after getting radiantified and bit? They didn't get radiantified. She only fired the radiant beam down the middle. No, 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 no. When they moved, Dessa's spell hit all of them for 34 damage. Correct. But it wasn't enough to kill someone. He's still and hanging I on. Yeah, he's still hanging on. Wow. Yep. Okay, more hit points than the one that got on the statue. They all have random hit points. Uh, within a within a variance. So, Fenris, do you want to move or are you done? I'll stay put. Okay, Rhea jumps forward. Oh, she's next to a knoll here. Uh, but she will get out of her sword uh, and attack this one next to you, Thor. So she slashes at it with a, her long sword twice, uh, deeply wounding it. And that's it for Fenris to charm. Sovereignty. Cool. I want to hit these dogs. Okay. Um. Get him, Sovereignty. Go, go, Sovereignty. 24 hit. 24 does hit. Do you want me to do all my attacks at once and then calculate damage? How do you want to do that? Um. Well, these two have not been... Well, only the one on the left has been wounded. So, yeah, go ahead and do all your attacks if you want. Okay. Um, because I have two attacks, but then I have plus one from haste, and then I've got my like bonus tail attack. Can I take all that's of them? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what weapon are you using? The radiant, the mace. The that's a good idea. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> are you using the um. Same? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna use the mace. Um. Yeah. To okay. Let me ta- do my other ones. Then. Okay. So, Simon, you <laughs> lash out with your mace many, many times, and then finish up with your tail. What Jack. do I have to hit to hit them? I'm sorry? What what's what am I aiming for to, to hit to land? 17. To hit? Okay. Second one was an 18. You have tough hides. That was a 15. What did you say again? Sorry. Nothing. No, for the to hit. 17. Okay, so two of the mace ones hit. Okay. So I'm gonna roll. Um six. That's four. Five. Oh, sorry, this is a um, this is a lot to calculate. <laughs> That's all right. It's a high level D and D. One minute. Actually, I just got a set with lots of D sixes, so that's fun. Okay, so that's five, six, seven, eight, one. Twelve. That's twenty. Um, radiant. Okay. Total. On total on one of them, like for uh-huh. one attack so yeah. far. Yes. Okay, that's enough to take down one null as you crush it with your radiant damage. Mace. Cool. And then one damage. Okay. Um, three. Six, that's ten. Mace damage plus. I might have done that previous one a little bit wrong. Seven radiant. All right, for your second attack? Yeah, 10 regular mace and seven radiant. Got it, all right. And then I want to stab it with my tail. Okay, what about your haste action? Did that miss? 
Yeah, that missed. Oh, okay. All right, so I have a new tail. This is a big bummer. Um, one, two, four. Oh, does, uh, oh, I just rolled the attack. All right, you slam into one and it shoots out sort of missile goo as you do and slam into the other one and then you turn and just looking at it as a side glance, your tail comes out and choo, choo, two quick stabs like a scorpion. Yeah, that one hits and that's um, eight points of tail piercing. Okay, uh, your tails come back to your side, and uh, it, but it's not quite dead. Yeah, all right, and then um, do I still have, I still have movement? No, yeah, oh, I'd have to disengage, wouldn't I? You would. I'll take an I'll take an attack of opportunity. Um, I kind of want to be back with the party so they have my stuff, so I'll take that opportunity. Okay, uh, that misses completely. That's a one. So, all right, where would you like to run back to? I just want to be uh, sort of in that cluster of them so that they get my bonus, yeah. Right there? I don't know. Cool? Yep, cool. Thanks. All right. So he dashes back and you feel uh, a enervation, a positive influence, mostly. An aura of hate and so forth. Okay. It's the Demon Lord Yonogu's time to go. Oh, no. He teleports. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, okay. Is he going to, did he make the constitution saving throw? Oh, otherwise he's what? Damaged. Damaged and blind. He makes it. He no, makes no, he, it for, for fatigue. He makes it. Oh, then never mind then. Oh, he takes no damage. That's right. Yeah. We'll yeah. Wait. If he makes Five it, doesn't matter. matter. All oh. right. Uh, so he teleports. Crap. In between realms, uh, and he'll situate himself. Uh, no, no, not with him. Uh, he will situate himself right in the middle of your party, right no. next to the statue of Zariel. Uh, at which point, he has a 10-foot range, so he's going to be attack, uh, start to attack with his flail uh, at everybody. So, first attack will be at you, Des. Um, can I ask, is this, an, is this a melee attack? It's a melee attack, yes. Okay, so if he hits me, well, I, I guess, tell me if he hits me or not. He hits you. He rolled a 35. No. Okay, yeah, he definitely hits me, but he's going to take... 20 points of cold damage because of my armor of Agathis. Okay, so he says, hunger, hunger, and he comes down with the mace and a chilling effect envelops him in return. And um, so he takes 20 points of that. Can I use a reaction? That's you already used it for counterspell. Oh, okay, so it's not like every time, even though that was a different creature hitting me? Oh, 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 I've got it. Turn. I've got it. Um, He's going to make an attack, correct? Yes. Uh, when a visible creature within 30 feet makes an attack, I'm going to cast Blood Curse of the Eyeless. Um, uh, I can use a reaction to sub- subtract my Hemocraft die roll from that creature's attack Which is attack a D8 roll, now. Which is a D8 now. Okay. Wait, so how, can I ask how reactions work then, I guess? Yeah, one reaction action per turn. To apply. Oh, per round. Okay, so never mind then. Yeah, okay, well, he still takes 20 points of cold damage. Yes, I got that. And you roll an 8. From... Get him, Fenris, get him. Okay, I just let you know, I already told you what he rolled. Even subtracting an 8, that's not even... That's not enough to, that's still above Des's AC. Yeah, that's a 27 still. True, working. but he'll have to subtract eight from every attack roll he makes from this period on, because I use Amplify. Oh, wow, okay. Wow, until until when, the start of your next turn? Um, It just says apply to all the attack rolls of that creature. I think it's if they have multiple attacks. Uh, so it's for this turn? So it's probably just this turn. I'm not sure. Does she, have, does she have to roll every time, or is it just an eight for all three? It's an eight for all three. It's an eight for all three? Okay. Pretty sure. Yeah. That's huge. It's really going to help. But Des, you are hit. So Des, I need you to make a constitution and wisdom saving throw. Both. Oh, crap. You get a bonus. You get plus three. Stop. Uh, he, I... Okay, no, I'm ki- just kidding, David. Get rid of that 20 points of cold damage huh? because I realized. Crap. I was thinking for some reason that Armor of Agathis was a cantrip, so I used one too many spell slots when I used Counterspell. So, since I haven't been hit yet, can I pretend I didn't do Armor of Agathis? Because if not, I did Sickening Radiance and Counterspell, which sure. is my. Okay, that's fine. I thought you, pre- I thought you prepped Armor of yeah. Agathis before. Yeah, but it still takes a spell slot. So I only have two spell slots right now as a warlock, and I used one for counter spell, and I used one for the sickening radiance, yeah, and one for armor of Agathis. Okay. Which I wasn't thinking about it because I was thinking it was a cantrip. No problem. So 
I don't have that. It would, because that, I guess, would be, I know it's kind of like, hmm, fudging it a little bit, but I think the only thing I could change then would be as if he doesn't get those 20 points of okay. cold damage. That's no problem. Sorry. Thanks, Dean. Uh, makes Dan. sense. I'm going to apologize. Combat is hectic. It's so, until the end of the turn, by the way. Yeah, but it says you roll a new Hemocraft die for each effect that attacks. You have to roll it every time. Uh, that's what I see here on the Eyeless. So every time he attacks, oh, but all, you do get all three uh, for all of his attacks, which is fantastic. So uh, does that also help that Jess, are we, uh, I've been forgetting, are we rolling an extra D4 because we're blessed? Does that help? On your attacks, yes. Okay, okay. Yep. Okay, so this does hit you, Jess. I need you to give me a, a constitution and a wisdom saving throw. Constitution and wisdom? Both, yes. Okay. Wow! Oh my god, okay. Uh, it was a nat 20 for constitution. Okay, all right, you make that save. So and then 22, and then wisdom uh, was 19 plus 20. Okay, you are neither paralyzed nor confused. Wow, this again. is good. That was really lucky. All right, Des. All right, Des, you take 65 points of bludgeoning damage. Yikes. Unless you have half. Uh, no, why would I take half? Okay. And Wait, why would, I, why would I take half? That's what I'm saying. Unless you have half, you take 65 you points. Things like I do. Oh, yeah, no, I don't have anything cast, unfortunately. Correct. So, so 65. Okay. Um, well, actually, his attacks are magical, so no, you do not. You would not take the half damage, even if, so it overcomes your resistances. Yeah, so that's still 65. Okay, okay. four. So, Fenris, roll your Bloodcraft die, please. Aww. Uh, you don't, because I rolled a one. Um, so, <laughs> four, he comes down with a flail, and all three, so the three parts of the flail, two land on one side of you and one on the other, and you just kind of look up, uh, and this misses you, and he rears back, uh, and is going to attack you, Judgment. He's right next to you. Hemocraft die, please. Aww. Uh, two. Not enough. Judgment, you are hit. Judgment, Constitution, and Wisdom saving throw, please. You have been fly swatted. All right. You are close enough to get the plus three. Constitution is 20. Okay, you made that. And what was the other one? Wisdom. Um, wisdom. Wisdom. 831. Uh, 24. Okay, you made both. So the you get hit though, a little kind of low, 45 points of bludgeoning damage. Good, I don't die outright. Three heads of the of his flail impale you, right? And you feel something try to take over your body, but you manage to push it away the force of will. And okay, so it's you know it was done. Anatoly, you're up. Okay, um, I am going to uh, look towards the battlefield. Okay. And I am going to expend two sorcery points to quicken mass suggestion. Nice. And I'm going to target every creature. Uh, I'm going to ch- target all of the demons that are not Inogu. All right. I am going to suggest to them that they defend the statue. All righty. So what I roll is it a save of some kind? Um. It. Uh. Da, 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 da. They must make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. So 60 feet. So basically all the gnolls here. Uh, yeah, but that also reaches these other guys, too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly 60, actually. Yes, they do. Okay. All right. So here we go. I guess I'll roll for each knoll individually. My spell save is 19. Okay, looks like just two saved out of these guys. Um, so mm-hmm. that means that, okay, 
is this one this one saves i was rolling top to bottom so these three are now under your suggestion right yes correct and you, you any suggestion besides something that would cause them to hurt themselves what about the big guys i haven't gotten to them yet okay okay all right one makes a save and the other one makes a save God damn. both 19s so you have these three gnolls are now suggested to defend so they suddenly stop what they're doing and look mm-hmm. around uh, and have to defend. Unless they get hit, right? Um, suggestion must be worded in a manner as to make the course of action sound reasonable. Asking, it can't ask a creature to stab itself, throw itself onto a spear, <laughs> or do some other obviously harmful act. Yeah, it continues the best of its right. Okay, so now I have three on your side. And then I am going to, because I quickened that, I am going to cast three Eldritch Blasts. So use your warlock powers to eh, black tendrils take over their minds, and they're, yeah, currently defending the statue with you. Okay, let's see. And I'm blessed, so. Okay, so that is going to be a... Um, 30 to hit for the first... Uh, 31 to hit for the first attack. Yep. A... And then... Two nineteens to hit. And you're attacking who again? Sorry? Inogu. Okay, yeah, you hit them all. Okay, and it looks like the damage is going to be... So it's going to be a total of... You fire with force projectiles, boom, 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 and all three impact onto Inogu. going to be a total of 27. I rolled kind of low, unfortunately. 27? Okay. On all three attacks total? Yeah, all three attacks total. All right, they impact. I I hate because you're in my aura. Oh, no, you're not in my aura. Never mind. Don't do that. Every time one impacts, you see his sort of, his flesh sort of uh, cave in, and then... Is that... Yeah. Wait, what do I add to it? Nothing. Never mind. Yeah. I'm slightly out of range. (laughs) Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, is that your turn? And I believe that is my turn. Okay. Right. At the end of the turn, Yunogu enacts a legendary action. I need everybody to give me a dexterity saving throw. Yikes. Okay. Yeah, Dave, you have advantage. You have, at least you have advantage on that. Everybody else Wait. is plus three if you're within range of Sovereign. We have advantage? You have advantage on it if you got haste. Oh. Yeah, plus three otherwise. Plus three. Not, we don't get another D4 because of Blessed, right? That's just... That's for attacks, yep. Wow. Uh, David, I'm going to use a lucky point and yep. add a D20 to my roll. That lucky point isn't you roll a different D20, it's you add the D20. Uh, it is, can use for attack slash ability saving or saving throws. Add a D20. Use on attack against me, basically. That's amazing, yeah. Okay, yeah, so. uh, top to bottom, give me your... Uh, okay, you all have it. It's a DC of 24, Dex. You missed. 24? 24. I need to make a 24? Everyone Wait, 27. I missed it. 21 was Wait, good. You said Dex... Oh, sorry. Oh. Dex saving throw of 24, yes, that's what it is. 27. Uh, 27, so Fenner's the only one that made it? No, I made it 31. 31? Anybody yeah, else? Yeah, with my lucky. No. Okay. I'll put you in the space of the spike. Okay, so beneath you, a abyssal spike shoots up. Um, and... Is this an enema? Almost, if you didn't make the roll. Uh, if you did not make the save, you're now restrained. You're being impaled by a spike. Your speed becomes zero. 
Uh, and attack rolls against you are advantage. Can I use a reaction? Sure. Does he damage to me? Yep. He has to make a dex save. Okay. Against your spell save, DC, right? Uh huh, it's 15. You made it. Oh. Oh, wait, I can still roll. He gets half damage. Okay. 2d10. All right, these are not magical. These are not magical spikes. If you take half damage, if you have resistance to piercing in this case, you only take half damage from this. Uh, okay. So the full damage is forty-two points of piercing. Am I still hit up in the air? Yes, the spike goes all the way. It says nothing about it. it bursts from the ground. It can go. There's no limit. I'm oh, sorry. It's a hundred foot limit. How far up are you in the air? Not that high. What? I'm 300 feet in the air. Yeah, this is so uh, a spike shoots up and sort of impales you. And if you didn't make the save, it's holding you in place. It ruptures through your skin and, and you're held there. You're held well, there. that doesn't matter. I'm down. Okay. So Judgment is down. So um, he's impaled and he flies. And the, the spike comes down with him. Uh, and he's uh, currently you have to make a death saving throw on your next turn. He takes three fire damage from Alex. <laughs> Okay, three points of fire damage. Big money, big money. All right. How much was the total damage? It was 42. 42 piercing. Half, if you have resistance to piercing, of course. Oh, I went to 21. Correct. I'm hit twice and I'm not already dead. What is this? And that's his legendary, one of his legendary actions. Oh my god, this guy is wild. Okay. Uh, his last legendary action is he makes two bite attacks against any creatures within his range. Uh, okay, so Sovereignty and Mambo. Uh, Mambo is a critical hit. Sovereignty, you were hit. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Fenris, roll your Hemocraft die. I know. That's Roll your Hemocraft die. Six. Six? Yes. Okay, Fenris, you were missed, thanks to... Oh, thank God. <laughs> so he comes out with this huge maw. It looks like he's going to devour you whole. And some blood magic just seizes his jaw, like some uh, tendrils of blood sort of stops him in place, and he shakes it off. It doesn't hit you. Uh, and then Mambo takes a critical hit, though. From the bite attack, which is legendary action. Mambo. Mambo takes 105 points of piercing damage. All right, Mambo is down. Okay, Mambo is down as well. So both of them are down. Either one can be. Mambo is a living creature, so he can be caught back up if you guys want to do that. Luckily, that happened first. <laughs> <laughs> So he basically takes a bite into Mambo, lets go, and Mambo falls back in two parts of his skeleton. Okay, and that's all legendary actions I'm doing for now. Back to the top. Did I take, did I take damage? No, because of the hemograph die. Can I ask Ooh. a question? Yes. Ooh. How big is he? You're welcome. He's about 20 You're feet welcome. tall. So he's, he's like huge size. He's 20 feet tall. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, back to top four. You're up. Oh, I can't go anywhere. You you would be hit three times. No, no, no. They're on defense. I'm sorry? They're on defense. I don't want to be hit once. Even if I could move. Okay. All right. Those two gnolls are not going to attack our opportunity. Okay, sure. You'll just get attacked by the thing that does like 80 damage to hit. I can't move anyway. I'm impaled. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're restrained. Yeah, you can use your action to try to get out of it if you want. No, what I said is I'm not going to move, and then you were like, "Oh, you'll get attacked." Oh, you can't even move. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate in place as a turret, if you can mark me as such. Okay. One of the little icons you can put on me. Okay. That uh, you know, you're oh, you guys are restrained. That's right. Yeah. I don't worry about the icons. I'll do that as we go. But yeah. There's a little machine gun turret one. God. All right, you are a machine gun turret, which is literally a thing, right? Oh, there it is. Yep, there we go. 
Sorry, not to super interrupt. If we die, don't we just go back to, don't we wake up from the dream? It's not really like there's a risk of like dying, dying or... Yeah. Or anything. Oh, you're, okay. You're just in plane right now. Oh. Oh, oh, yikes. Okay, okay. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep up what I was doing before and firing on her buddy. Okay. Now that I have sovereignty's buff again. On the gnolls? No. Oh, I'm on this guy? Attack the boss. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna continue attacking sure. Because you're engaged in melee, you would be at disadvantage unless you have the appropriate feat for that not to be the case. Oh, because it's his melee range. Yeah. Well. Oh, I don't think I do. Double check. Well, you can use spell, otherwise, that spell would not be a disadvantage, I don't think. But it maybe. But spells provoke attacks of opportunity. Wait, disadvantage? I thought it just provoked attacks of opportunity. That's DD 3rd edition. <laughs> uh, boss. Yeah. So, do spells provoke attack of opportunity? If you're melee, no, nothing provokes attack of opportunity in this game other than moving. What the, what the issue is, if you use a spell or ranged, you will be a disadvantage to attack, though, while you are engaged in melee. While someone's engaging you, threatening you in melee. What if I'm attacking someone in melee? With a melee weapon, that's fine. With a ranged weapon or spell, that's disadvantage. So spells are disadvantage too. As long as yeah, if someone, if someone is if someone is threatening you in melee range, yes, I'm pretty ninety nine percent sure that's the case. In fifth. I don't know. I have better. You can use your action to try to unrestrain yourself. As currently a uh, spike has be, burst through your. Would that be my movement action or my actual action? It's action action, action be unrestrained. Uh, hmm. Well then, I'm basically at disadvantage no matter what I do. Unless you get out like an axe or something. Yeah. I mean, I have melee weapons, but they're more or less useless. Pistol weapon. Uh, he's beyond my reach, so no. Okay. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to do my attacks at disadvantage anyway. Alright. I've got... A bonus on my attack roll anyway at the moment. You have, you have Bless. That's an extra 1d4. Yeah. Uh, and Dash, you're up next. Yep. Oi. Oh, that's a mess. That's a mess. No, oh, wait. No, that's a hit. Okay. Uh, 22, right? Yes. Wait, wait. Guys, you skipped in. It's holy. No, no. we did. No. And that's automatically a mess. You went, right, Anatoly? I'm pretty sure you went before. Yeah, I went. I'm good. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's because you know who did has uh, legendary action, so it can be used at any time. The 26 damage for the one attack I got to hit. All right, we strained. You move as you're sparking with a spike through you, but you tried to get it in range and shoot despite these gnolls harassing you, and you do get some shots off. Um, and... All right, that is your turn four. Um, I, let me double check. I don't think I have anything else I can do right now. Okay. No, that actually requires a full action, so nope, I'm done. Hey, Des, you're up. Great. Oh, sorry, um, 26. 26 is going to go. Not oh, bad. Yeah. 26 uh, rushes over to you. Um, judgment. She casts Lay on Hands. She uses Lay on Hands. Um, for 80 hit points. Yes! Oh my god, what a good girlfriend you have for. Oh man. He's better than I am. I feel better now. <laughs> I would hope. He looks down at you and says, Are you okay? I am better now. Ugh. Okay. Are you still impaled? What'd you say for? Sorry. Is he still impaled? He's still impaled, yeah, but he's doing okay. fine, I guess. I don't know. I just use all the lay on hands. Full hit points, but I got a spear going through me. Great. Yeah. Okay, Des, now you're up. Great. I already pre calculated for my bonus attack, or my bonus action. Uh, I'm going to take a potion of greater healing, because I have okay. one. Uh, so I took that for a bunch of points of HP, so nobody else had to deal with me, and that way it's done. Okay. Um, so that was my bonus action. I was just like knocking back a potion. Uh, and it's gonna be dumb, but we'll see. What is the statue made of? 
The statue is made of rock. I mean, it's typical right. earthen statue, yeah. Fascinating, because I have the spell in my new golden lyre, stone shape. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is take out my golden lyre, play a little ditty, and then basically touch the statue and I can make it into any form I want. We're supposed to be protecting the statue. What? We're supposed to be protecting the statue. I know, I know. That's what I'm getting at. I'm getting at it. Because it's so large. So I'm going to take the statue. And it's going to be like Play-Doh. And I'm going to mold it into a ball of stone and put it in my bag. Okay, I will let you do that. Uh, so the object has to be medium size or smaller, which it is not. Oh, never mind then. But if you want to cast it a higher level spell, I'll let you do that. Uh, well, it's just a spell that I have because of the golden liar, so I don't know how that would work. Oh, that's right, yeah. Okay. No, it doesn't work. Just kidding. I put the liar away. Yeah, I, I don't Guys, think... my liar is not actually tuned, so I can't do this spell. It sounds terrible. So I put the liar away. That was a good idea, though, in theory. Okay, do you, I mean, we can still maybe find a way around it if you want. Which, which one of your spells returns it back to a statue of Lathander? Huh? Zero. Yeah, it's, it's a statue of Zero. It's oh, a sorry. Whatever. I just wanted it to be like I could put it in my pocket for safe keeping. Okay, if you want to use... All your energy. If I let you. How about this? If you use all, expend all the spell slots in the liar, I'll let you do it. The spell. The liar only has one slot. Oh. So the way that the liar was, it gave me the options of stone shape, wall of fire, wind wall, fly, invisibility, or levitate, and I could use them once per uh, long. Gotcha. The statue is it's larger too big. It's than too big. the state of the spell. So. Okay. Good in theory. An object nearby. For example, some chunks have been carved off the statue. You can use that. No, I just wanted to put it in my pocket for safekeeping, but that is not possible. So, plan B. It's fine. My guitar is not tuned. I mean, oh, I guess, actually, that's a... Okay, I just had an idea from the gods above. <laughs> actually, I think what I'm going to do then is cast stone shape. Just kidding, guys, I tuned it. <laughs> Very quickly. I'm going to actually take the pieces that have been ripped off mm -hmm. and been attacked so far by the gnolls, and basically, like Play-Doh, put the statue back together so it's whole again. Okay, now that'll work. That. All okay, right. so I pluck out a little ditty, and I put my Play-Doh pieces back together. So I'm constructing it again. You become a potter, and yes. you uh, ghost this thing together, and yeah, giving its whole full hit points back. Yes, so it should be all together. All right, it begins to shine as bright as it did when you first saw it. Yay! I played with Play-Doh, and that's my, uh, if I move, I'm going to get attacked by Yunobu and aren't I? No, by nobody. Oh, you're you're off the range. Yeah. What? Can I run away? Yes, you can. Yeah, I think I'm going to run away. Okay. Sorry, guys. Bye. I'm done. I got to go wash my hands from the Play-Doh. Um, I'm going to move five, ten, basically as far down to the right as possible. The okay. End. Yeah, yeah, I'm out of there. Bye. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hide. Desk <laughs> quickly <laughs> mends the statue and runs away. Anything else, Des? No, that's my whole turn. And it's been a lot of fun. Goodbye. Okay. All right, everyone. Who is not restrained? Fenris is not restrained. And who else is not? Who else made the save? No one else did? Okay. So just Fenris. Everyone else who is restrained... Uh, you'll be attacked at, attacked at advantage. So, four. Oh, the, what? Those two are under the word of Anatoly. Would they even be attacking oh, us? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're three right. of them are under, are going to be attacking, you know. Okay. Right. So they're defending the statue, which is now whole. Uh, and that's good. So you will not be attacked. So this, this knoll attacks this knoll, uh, who has no idea why this is happening. Uh, and they claw at each other. And these gnolls begin to attack the demon lord, who is very angry. He's like, how dare you? As these gnolls latch on to him uh, and will attack him. 
Not an advantage, but. Get him! Hey, one critical hits him. You must get him. Get it! <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, he's being attacked by his own minions of the abyss. This one attacks that one. Okay, Fenris, this one's attacking you. You made your save, so. That's a miss. And this one rush full, rushes forward and attacks you as well, Fenris. There's also a miss. So they, they come forward, you just swat these stupid gnolls out of the way. Um, and and everybody else is restrained except for you. You're just like, yeah, the Hulk. So nothing can stop Fenris. Okay. That's all the Judgment, you are actually up, but Mambo is not. Nothing I can do about that. Um, not why that boss is standing there. Anymore. Judge, uh, Mambo will need a death saving throw, though, once you get to his turn. Um, I'm not sure. Well, might as well get some damage in before he downs me again. <laughs> I'm going to cast Chain Lightning on him. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. All right, so... It's gonna arc from him to the two gnolls that are not friendly to us. Oh, got it, okay. Uh, they all need to make a dexterity saving throw. All right, dex, make it. Well, you know who actually failed. Yes, about time. Yeah, it was only I can I will, never mind. So 10 D8. Get him, yes. The other gnolls at this, go ahead and roll the damage. These other gnolls are, are, are electrified. Uh, spam at this point. So, Judgment g- gets up still impaled and weakly shoots off a bolt of lightning that arcs and then arcs off two other ways with other gnolls, frying them to Chris and quickly encompassing the Nobu. What? 39. 39 points of damage of uh, thunder damage, right? Okay. Yanogu is visibly bloody. Yeah, he is. Uh, and okay, bonus action or um, I don't think I have anything I can do with my bonus action. Um, you can throw a healing pot equivalent at your dead person. You can throw a healing potion on yeah. You want me to use holy stuff on an undead creature? Yes. Yeah. It's a holy healing potion. It's an undead healing potion. It has like blood in it and stuff. Yeah. I would have to have a healing potion to do that. Um. I don't. I don't have any. There's no actions I can take. So I guess I'm done. You're not moving your undead horde. Oh yeah, those guys. <laughs> Um, ah, there's a big horde. Like, you forgot Robin, that. Robin, eat the demon king. <laughs> they might as well. Okay, the horde rushes to get all whatever, have seven, eight of them, <laughs> just go <laughs> crawling under the, you know, like the World War Z stuff, and Maybe jump onto this. More. What's the damage? 40. Okay. All right, 40 damage. Okay, Fenris. No, sorry. Spellcasters first. These spellcasters. Wait, wait. Do they make the constitution save? Oh, they're still in there again. Oh, my yeah, God. It's, a, it's a concentration yeah. spell. I still have it going. Uh, double fail. So what does that mean? They just take the damage, right? Or they, yeah, I think, well, they take 30. What was it? 34? Yes. Yeah. 34 points of radiant damage plus a level of exhaustion. Oh, wow. Okay, so they have one level. That's good. Have you taken damage, Jazz? Uh, yeah, I'm at like half hit points, but I took a, my bonus action. I used a healing portion. I'm fine. I also ran away. Oh, did you, did you roll to maintain concentration on the spell? Oh crap. No. How do I do that again? Thank you. How do I do that? What do I roll? No idea. Um, it's the, I think it's five plus the damage you took. If it's higher than, right? Oh, then that spell no longer exists because I took like 60 something points of damage. You'd have to roll, yeah, you have to roll like a 70 on your d Yeah, yeah, let me roll a 70. <laughs> and then, let Sorry, me write no it <laughs> Oh, no. Lame. No, it's okay. Thank you, Anatoly. Okay. Um, so just oh, kidding. Those they don't take. Casters are about to shish kebab us, aren't they? <sighs> yeah, okay, just kidding. That spell no longer exists. The spellcasters okay. do not take uh, 30. Tied to the damage. Okay. Yep. So instead, the these uh, spellcasters double up and you see them cast a spell quickly 
uh, which is Blight. So on Fenris and Sovereignty, you need to give me a constitution saving throw. Counterspell as a reaction. Okay. I can't. I can. Oh, I was gonna say okay. I. Um, okay, on which one? The one that's attacking Fenris or the one attacking Sovereignty? Who's, gonna... who's doing better? Yeah, I was thinking, who's doing better, I guess. I have um, 90 hit points. 73. Okay, on the one Sovereignty. <laughs> yep. Well, how okay. fair and just we Anton are. puts up his own strange looking glyph uh, with some strange <laughs> devil powers and cancels that out, but constitution saving throw. Sovereignty. Or whoever. Fenris. Fenris. 16. 16. Uh, unfortunately, you plus take the full damage. Three. Oh, plus three? Oh, plus three. Uh, 19. Then you made it. Sovereignty, yes. Laura. <laughs> take half damage. Math. Woo! Right. 8d8. Oh. Um. So half damage would only be 18 points of damage. 18 points of necrotic damage. How you doing, Fenris? 72, still hanging in there. Yeah, okay. you're doing great. Speaking of which, Fenris, you are up. Okay, uh, oh, sheesh. Um. Oh, damn, I forgot yeah. to add plus three damage. To what? I forgot to add the plus three from Sovereignty. Oh, you were close. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead and do that because I'm trying to keep track of a lot. But I'll add it now. I have his. Well, I, I forgot. That's fine. I got it now. All right, Fenris, you have. You're currently not surrounded by anybody. You're the only buddy not impaled by a huge spike. So. Quick question: If I did Sunbeam again, I would still have because I have three attacks in the turn. Would I have two attacks still, or just one? So, okay. Here's what's happening. If you use. Oh wait. Oh yeah, so would she maintain concentration on it also? Because she's taken damage. Oh yeah, has she done concentration saving throw? No. Probably not. You probably lost at this point. You've taken a lot of damage. Okay. I mean, and I can't cast it again? No. Okay. Yeah, it only has one it only has one use to dust crush her, yeah. Okay. Um can, uh how many attacks you normally get? You get three attacks normally? Two attacks? I just in in my recent upgrade I just got three. So plus the haste, so that's four, plus your bite is five. Oh my God! What? Did it clarify? No, 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 no! no, 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 no. Sorry. With haste. With got, haste, I three got three. Attacks. Sorry. Okay, so three plus the bite is four. Judgment. I want to clarify that concentration, the DC check is half the damage that you took. Oh, half the damage. Okay, Des, you don't have to roll like a thirty-five. Is that possible? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> so Fenders might be able. Fenders might be able to. I think she's been hit like three, two, three times. I have to go back. So. Probably, it's unlikely, let's say. Yeah, it's unlikely that I could roll higher than that, um, unless I critted. And even there's then, no, I'd still- Yeah, there's no critting concentration, so. Um, you want to just attack, that's fine. Yeah, do it. Yeah. I might as well. Can I reach the guy in the lower, the green guy in the lower corner? Yeah, you can do it. Have a, yeah, you can bound across I me mean, of the jump ring. You, have, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can jump on there. Can I use the jump ring to get like right on top of him? Sure. You don't need to, really. With your strength, your jump is so high. Uh, just your typical jump, your normal high jump. You can just okay. bound onto this uh, building and bound again and just kind of take him down. Like just completely yeah, jump I'm gonna on Yeah, I'm going to do that with my hammer out to do the first hit. Hit him right over the head. Yeah, go ahead. That's so cool, Venerous. So she bounds and then jumps on this building. It, it collapses a little bit, but she uses it to rebound and jump again and completely overtakes this large demon. Uh, and just she begins, like, grabs onto it. It's trying to maintain flight, but she's just bashing at it with her uh, hammer. I'm sorry, hang on. Uh, um, okay, so first attack to hit is 24. That's it. Um, and damage is also 24. Okay. Um, I'll go at it with a second hit from the Warhammer. Um, this tech is uh, 30 to hit. That's a hit. Um, and 23 for the damage. He's down. So you crush and you, you're holding on to him and you just <laughs> break it as the demon's head open and like abyssal blood spills out everywhere. Blue demon ichor spills all over your fur. Uh, but you kill him and you still have another attack plus mm -hmm. your bonus action. Can I jump over to the other guy or no? Sure. You can use this guy as a uh, Jumping board and jump onto this guy. Alrighty, you third have the pick. Movement, five, ten, fifteen. Yeah, you can do that. 
Third attack, uh, 26 to hit. That's a hit. And 24 to damage. Okay. Um, Almost. So you do, you fly at him like uh, Thor, right, with your hammer in front of you? Yes. Hit him, and you have your bonus action still, right? And then I'm going to chomp down for 17 to hit. That's a hit. And 15 plus. for the damage. 15 plus each double four. All right. And you kill oh. him. Oh, you oh my god, yeah. <laughs> kill one, jump, and kill the other one, bite the other one. <laughs> like, just uh, neck off, and his head comes down, and demon acre spills everywhere. Both oh, the spellcasters are down. But you're out of movement, basically. I'm going to hang put. Okay, Sovereignty, you're up. Wait, what about Rhea? Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, here's what I'm going to do in the future is I'm going to put them together it's, with me. It's a team. It's a, it takes a team. Instead of just assuming that I'm going to remember because I don't. Okay, Rhea. Uh, oh, that's right. This, these two. Okay, so Rhea defending her homeland. Jumps onto the back of Yunogu uh, nice. and stabs him with his long sword. Just like right in his back. Get in there, girl. Yes. And does severe damage and Yogu goes, Aah! And that's her turn. Penris, your wife is cool. Yogu is up. Yogu. Wait, 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 wait. What about Sovereignty and Lulu? Oh yeah, Sovereignty. I put Sovereignty next to her. Oh my gosh. Yes, Sovereignty and Lulu, thank you. <laughs> You're gonna just like, was like put off Yogu attacking as long as possible. <laughs> For all DMs, take better notes than me. Okay, Sovereignty. Uh, so I'm restrained by this spike. You're restrained, yes. And you know, it, you can still hit you know, he's only five feet away from you. Oh, great. Um, quick question. Is it a magic spike or is it like no no longer magic? I have dispel magic and I was wondering if that was. Okay, uh, it is, let's see. For physical, because you said it, my damage resistance. Yes, it's physical. Okay, yeah, it's, I kind of thought that, but if I can still attack. You can still attack, yes. I'm just going to do that. Uh, you just reach out as the spear just impaled through your abdomen, basically. Yeah, I'm gonna roll all three at the same time, if that's cool. All right, yeah. Great. Um, so 16, 14, and 13 plus eight each. What is, uh, what do I have to do? We have to hit? Okay, yeah. Oh, uh, an 18. 18? Oh, okay. um, they, to hit him? Yeah. Is that his AC? Oh, they all hit. Okay, cool. there you go. So, if, <laughs> In a bloody frenzy, you slight, you know, attack out. Okay, I'm gonna roll a lot of dice. I'm very, very sorry. This is gonna be unpleasant to watch. Are you doing smites? Oh yeah. Oh good. So <laughs> every hit just explodes with radiant damage. And all my bludgeoning first. How's that? So you want me to come back. You want me to come back to you after you lose action? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I hope that'll be all better. right. The camera cuts to Lulu. <laughs> As, so somebody's just attacking wildly. Yeah. It hits every attack. Uh, and every time it hits, part of Yunogu explodes in radiant damage. And actually what Lulu's going to do is she's going to use heal on you, Sovereignty, and it'll heal you to full. Or does, I think, 100 hit point here uh, heal. Nice. Sorry, we gained yeah. 70 hit points straight up. 70, not 100. Thanks, Lulu. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And angered by this attack, Yanogu is going to go after Sovereignty. Um, even if you roll really well, Sovereignty, he will still he will still live. So, are you sure? Okay, give me the damage. Right then, you're right. You're right. You're okay, right. that's forty-one bludgeoning, and I have not started yet the radiant. So that's yes, more than I thought. Actually, hold on a second. <laughs> yes, Zeriel's daughter will finish him. <laughs> um, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten. So that's 18 radiant for the first attack. Eight. I forgot the strength of Divine Smite. I should know better. As I haven't different. even used Divine Smite yet. This is just my sweet stuff. Yes. 11. Okay, hang on. 17. 37 radiant, and I have not done my Divine Smites yet. Holy cow. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Uh, 2d8, 1d8. I'm playing um, I'm gonna do like a level three divine smite. I haven't used any, that seems fine. Um, plus 1d8 per spell level, so that would be 
If it's 2d8, normally it would be 3d8 for a third level? Yes. Right? No, no, it'd be 4d8. No, 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 no. It's 2d8 normally? I said, yeah, it's 4d8. Third oh, level okay. is two levels okay. above, yeah. Oh. Plus another 1d8 for fiends, so 5d8? Oh my god. So Finish. many D8s. Finish him. Could have had a D8. <laughs> 7, 8. 12, hang <laughs> It's like a, a waterfall of dice. I can hear you roll my <laughs> dice sovereignty. Satisfying. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 53. No, that's not a 5. That's not how numbers work. Uh, 23. From my, that one divine smite. If that doesn't do it, I'm gonna do two more divine smites. No, no, that did it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Get him! All yes, right, Solomon. Daughter of Ariel, finish him. So I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna let you finish him. Um, so Lulu, as you were striking out, came to heal you, uh, and then you took yourself off the spike, like. So you freed yourself from the spike. Now how do you finish? Now how do you finish him? I didn't roll for that. Is that okay? Do you want me to roll for that? No, I want you to just finish him. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna run up there to join Rhea, and I'm gonna strike my mace down. I'm gonna like drive, woo, drive her sword down with my mace. Okay. Oh, like a like a hammer and nail, like. Psh. So you, <laughs> so Rhea gets uh, Rhea, who's holding on for dear life in defense of her of her hometown of uh, Elkara. Oh, in the, in the surrounding city, uh, towns, and you get up there, freed yourself with a gaping, you know, you, you just this gaping hole, the spike you pulled yourself out from and it's bleeding, but you get up there and you look at Rhea and you take your hammer, uh, your mace, and in one blow, you go, and you drive the sword all the way through its skull. And you pull back as, you know, go falls. Oh, oh that's so cool. Get it. <laughs> yes. Don't stop and <laughs> okay. Wow. Epic. That was epic. That was a great battle, DM. And you guys for making it so epic. Yeah. All right. That was Slayed. terrifying. I'm going to um, quickly run because I'm hiding behind the building. I'm going to run out as you know who's falling down. And I'm going to try to catch Sovereignty as she kind of probably. <laughs> In my full um, plate armor. Yeah, her full. I, I think I was going to actually, I mean, you know, I'm going to try my best to catch her as she. Okay, Des, just give me, you can use athletics or acrobatics if you want to be dexterous about it. I can see that. Use the, uh, you know. Can we have yeah, yeah. party members now? That's the point. Wait. That's a 24, actually. You catch her gracefully in your arms. And <laughs> she begins to bleed through your robes and armor, but she looks at you lovingly, I, I assume. <laughs> she goes, yeah. <laughs> Four, what'd you say? Do we have three new party members now? Three new party members. We got the three gnolls that are still on our side. Oh, it's only when the spell would end, right? The gnolls flee. Oh, okay. Yeah, it only lasts for 24 hours. So, and as you know who goes down, um, he begins to dissipate into the ground, as do the other demons, leaving what? this dream realm. Uh, at the same time, you hear a different force. It sounds like horses and cavalry and knights. And through the mist come the Hellrider it's army. A little too late. <laughs> and who's at their helm? But Rhea's mom. Rhea's what? <laughs> <laughs> We're in the past. It could be Rhea's mom or something. Rhea's mom? You mean a hundred years ago? Here in the first place. Rhea's grandma. I don't know. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Oh, it's a grandma. That's what I was guessing. I'm wrong. It's okay. So at the helm of these Hell Riders is none other than the Zeriel. angel, Zariel. Oh, oh. Um, and Zariel, much of the pictures you've seen, is a four-winged angel with a... a Sorry. <laughs> she's just a, a four-winged angel with a, a blindfold over her face. Uh, and next to her, leading the pack, is a giant golden mammoth. And Lulu looks up uh, to this mammoth. And 
Zario flies over to all of you, as do the rest, of, and the troops move forward, all these Hell Riders move forward and, and get into position. Uh, and one of them, Yale, winks at you all. Um, and Zario looks upon your victory. And she talks to each one of you. She talks to all of you, I should say. With a certain question. Well done. Yanogu slaughtered those I swore to protect. I can stop him and others like him. I might have to give up all that I stand for. But I could stem the tide of chaos and save many lives from the demonic terror of the abyss. Were you in my place, would you risk it all to save others? What? So, you're each given a moment to speak individually to answer a question. So I'm gonna roll one, two, three, four, five, six. Des, you're up first. So a question, were you in my place? Would you risk it all to save others? Of course, as you know, Zarya has not yet gone to hell. Oh, because we're in the past. Right. Um, my impulse is to uh, say uh, do I kind of look over my shoulder at Sovereignty. My impulse is to say yes, because other people are cool and important to me. And amen. She nods and thanks you. Four, you're next. Everyone else can't speak during this, by the way. Same question. Same question. <laughs> Can you read the you, you each individually. I would, or else history would be different. I value my experiences. He nods and thanks you. Judgment. I would say no. Only protect that which is close to you. The world is too large. She nods and thanks you. Anatoly. Um, I would have to say uh, depends on the day, to be quite honest. <laughs> she nods and thanks you. Fenris. I look over at Rhea, and I look back, and say, if it meant that she could live, I would not hesitate. She nods and thanks you. Then, as if almost deja vu like this has occurred before, you see Zariel point to a portal, and the troops begin to file in to Avernus. Then, the stream world dissolves, and you're back in the temple. Whoa. Also, based on your responses, you'll each get a different charm, uh, and we'll detail that at the end. Sovereignty, your mom didn't ask you Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm sorry, let's go back in the portal! Oh my god! I'm sorry, it's been a long night! <laughs> it explains your entire childhood. <laughs> oh shit, mommy! Shoot! Nope, nope, she just, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Nope, she just didn't ask you for particular reasons. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't even like your mom to talk to me first and <laughs> totally like ignore you. That was really rude of her. Whatever. Maybe she doesn't know that you're her daughter because it was like a hundred years ago. So like she probably, you know, you were like, not, you know. She... Anyways, 
It's cool. We got a weird relationship. I wasn't really bothered by it. <laughs> that happens for that happened for a reason that I had already prepared ahead of time. I'm really sorry for like triggering you. Ignore me. I didn't say oh, anything. Oh, triggered. <laughs> Abandonment issues. <laughs> yeah, yikes. All right. So uh, back in the, again, you're back in the temple in the dais with the sword glowing there. And now Yale, the ghost of Yale, uh, stands to the side of it. Lulu looks up at you, Sovereignty, and really at everybody, and says, I remember everything now. Idle Glen was the last straw. We followed Zeriel to Avernus, but evil, as you know, proved to be too much. As Modius appeared, promised Zeriel all the Infernal Legions to end the blood war, and she gave her fealty. But Yale and I, we took her sword, thinking that maybe one day we could, we or somebody could redeem Zeriel. And I gave him my memories so that this place could be to protect the sword. Cool. So now we know that Zeriel is good. That clarifies a lot. And now we know that Lulu is a giant golden mastodon. Oh, that was her. I thought that was her mom. No, that was the one that went with Zeriel to F. Yeah. Oh, Lulu. Yes. You still know how to do that? What? Do you still know how to do that, Lulu? Yeah. Uh, she nods and she looks at you and looks at the sword and looks back at you. <laughs> oh, yeah. We want a giant golden mammoth. Yes, we do. Get that sword, girl. Um, Our vehicle's not big enough for a giant mammoth. <laughs> That's now our vehicle. That's now our vehicle. It's the mammoth is now our vehicle. Uh, we're just gonna. So let me hold on. Oh, this is just an idea here to get you. Or we can have the vehicle right on the back of the mammoth. So this is. Cool. Cool. Yes. Yes. This is uh, Lulu's true form. This is what you saw. Yeah. This is what you saw. This is her true form there. The giant oh. gold. Whoa, oh my yeah. God. yeah, that's cool. Bonkers bananas. So yeah, this is it. Okay, and that's what's happening. Yeah, that's cool. Sovereignty, go get the sword. Go get the sword. Go get it. Pull it out of the stone. Uh, do we see General Yale anymore? Yeah, she's. I said she's off to the side now, not in front of you. I I point at the sword. And she nods. Okay and just looks that way. Okay, I'm gonna go get that sword. You're getting the sword? Mm. Okay, this is it. <laughs> Sovereignty walks up to the dais, puts her hands on the sword like she did in her dream. Mm-hmm. You pull it out, Sovereignty? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You claim the sword, and you get a familiar tingle that travels up your being. And somehow you're pulled to aim the sword up to the heaven. So immediately you just whoosh, lift it up. That's the cool guy thing to do. <laughs> yeah. And an explosion of light and rainbows fills the temple. Everyone else sort of blinded, but you can still look squinting. I can't squint. <laughs> Whatever, you can adjust your oculars. <laughs> the rest of you look on in awe as sovereignty, as Yale said, transforms from head to toe. Her armor, starting from her boots up to her helmet, and cloth turns from the black to resplendent hues of white, silver with gold trim. Her wings burst even larger in a spray of white feathers. Her hair grows substantially and morphs into colors of blue and white hues, and her eyes begin to glow gold. Fierce aura of goodness and strength overtakes you, Sovereignty. The the sword's text reads as follows. You are transformed into a heavenly, idealized version of yourself, blessed with otherworldly beauty and a touch of heaven in your heart. Neither magic nor divine intervention can reverse this transformation. Your alignment changes permanently to lawful good. You in the wrong oh. part. 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's epic. You're gonna, gain, you're gonna gain a lot of traits and also three levels. So you're like a god kind of now. Yeah, it's like, you can say that. What for? We have to leave the party, or we have to kick other people out of the party now. Wait, why? What? Lawful good, and we've got some people that are kind of. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, um, sovereignty. You, your, your hair looks. It looks good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's rad as hell. It's amazing. Um, I'm gonna say I can't. I that's just like can't even. She can't even look at sovereignty anymore. Uh, I'm sorry, where are we? Where are we going next? Where was the night? Where are we going? And upon saying that, the temple, the citadel, and the scab explode in a blinding light, and you hear just ringing in your ears. You can't even see. And as you open your eyes, as the blinding subsides, the scab of the temple are completely gone. Um, and all that remains uh, is your group and Yale, who seems to be fading out of existence. No tormentor? Tormentor's there. Okay, good. <laughs> Yale, is there anything else we can tell before you disappear into the unknown? Yale Bye. looks at you. Uh, looks at you, sovereignty puts her hand on your shoulder and nods approvingly. You have done the right thing, but one last trial awaits you. Zario is ready for you atop her personal flying fortress. It is stationed by the River Styx above the front lines of the Blood War. With the sword, you can save Elturel now, but Zeriel will not stop pulling cities down to use innocent souls as fodder in her war, a war she is losing. You must stop her, perhaps redeem her, perhaps not. But for the sake of Faerun itself, this is your task. Is there like a special code word to redeem? <laughs> I do not know that, but it will come to you. But I shall help you one last time. For, you were looking for the war machine, right? I glanced over to see if it was there after we could see again. Z Yale floats over to the war machine. I follow her over. Okay, you follow her over. If you don't attempt to stop her, she touches the war machine and begins to envelop it in a heavenly light. Oh, the war machine, it's glowing. Okay. Just like sovereignty, it begins to transform. The dark infernal iron is replaced with white-hued, pure, pure silver from Celestia. And the whole tormentor begins to glow with a golden aura. From the top sides, the metal splits open. <laughs> and two large cylindr cylindrical turbines emerge and then latch into place. Then the treads morph and expand into yeah. what you would imagine to be sort of solid mechanical bird-like wings. Yes, I can. Moments <laughs> later, the whole machine begins to levitate about one or two feet off the ground while emitting a gentle whirr. I can climb in. Okay. It's. I'm asking, can I climb in it? Or is it still doing its thing? No, it's done transforming. Okay, I climb in and I hit the horn. Oh, whoa, whoa, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, you, can, you can go to climb in and the door is closed, but perhaps you'll have a way to open it. Uh, and she then takes, looks at all you, and she says, I have done what I can. Haruman, I'm coming to you now. Godspeed to you all. And she- Yeah, definitely Godspeed with the new car. Thank you. She whisks away into sort of like, she, she fades completely into little balls of blue light and and they all splinter out, out up into the heavens. Okay, four, yes, you can enter the war machine. You can press the door. 
I see it in. It comes down. Recognize what I'm looking at. Uh, it looks like your Infernal War Machine, basically the same. A little, a little spacer, a little uh, roomier, and you don't see a, a infernal um, furnace. Oh yay! We don't have to use soul coins anymore. But okay. Can I right. on? The, it's already on. So everybody else, what would you like to do? Uh, let's go. Let's yeah, I'm gonna turn to machine. Oh. Um and locate the bathroom, and then I'll yell out to everybody, the toilet's golden! <laughs> uh, I'll turn to 26. Um, sorry, but shotgun! And then I run into the door. Okay. There's actually now in the driver's seat, uh, which instead of being open, the windows will be placed with like a, a glass, a celestial glass, uh, and there's two sort of side seats as well. Oh yeah, I'm sitting up there. Okay, as well. Nice. 26. Okay, Sovereignty, you uh, don't walk anymore unless you want to. You can float. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I'm definitely floating. You <laughs> <laughs> never touch the ground again. That's amazing. Never touch the ground here. So as, as, you, as you float, there's like a tinkle, a twinkle of stars behind you. A twinkle, a twinkle of stars behind you. And just on occasion, your wings slap by themselves to keep you afloat, and you enter the celestial war machine. Okay, yes. Judgment, Anatoly Fenders, haven't heard from you guys? I'm going. Okay. I mean, I looked- Oh, that's right, you went to the bathroom. Judgment. All right, so everyone got really distracted, and they all ran off Oh, to the new shiny war machine. I turn around and look at dead Mambo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Mama was just like, <laughs> oh no, so, we left him. So let me go ahead and make those three saving throws and see if he's actually dead or not. I have a vivify. Would that hurt him because he's undead? No, it doesn't matter. You went, you left. Your vivify worked fine. <laughs> I'm going to use vivify. I'm working got distracted, but sovereignty would heal her party. <laughs> Mama was just, Mama was just twitching the whole time. <laughs> sovereignty His lawful good sovereignty. Saving throws would have happened during the conversation with Zeriel. Yeah. Which actually she heals all of you, so but maybe she didn't notice Mambo because he's a skeleton. Alright, so the first roll is a nineteen. He makes it. And I got a twelve. He makes it. And then a fourteen. Alright, he recombines himself. He puts his torso back together. He's <laughs> he's like he just does a little jig. <laughs> I live. Yeah. Okay, now you have a war machine that can is really a jet. <laughs> oh my god, it's epic. Okay, you all get in. Judgment, do you get in with Mambo? I send Mambo in ahead, and I tell him to go uh, shake his finger at everybody. Okay, he does that. He shakes his <laughs> finger. All right, Mambo. And uh, Mambo. then I order the undead horde to climb on top of the holy machine and make it look ugly again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the as the undead creatures touch the machine, uh, they become celestial. Attribute. Oh. <laughs> Undead celestials, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, and they all, all the frowns turn upside down, they're smiling. <laughs> I love it. Four. Hey, four. You've got to say it. Huh? You've got to say it. Rhodes. <laughs> You've got to say it. <laughs> As we take off into the sunset, you better say it. Huh? From Back, Back to the Future. To the future. <laughs> oh God, I haven't seen that in forever. I don't remember. Uh, roads, where we're going, we don't need. We don't need roads. <laughs> yeah. I never got to honk the horn. Okay. Oh, and on that note, no. it does a heavenly. It sounds like a a, a a trumpet, like a a you know a war horn trumpet. Okay. Mm-hmm. The last important thing we must check. Can I still get the rock station? No. <laughs> Sadly, you turn on, it says radio. Do you want to turn it on? Yes. It's all classical music. Rock. <laughs> um. Classical or boring? Yes. Classical? It's boring classical music. Turn it up even higher. <laughs> okay. I was stuck in an elevator. All right. You have acquired your celestial war machine that can now fly 
Uh, your next step might be to challenge Zeriel herself, but that is up to you. This might be uh, totally. What? Yeah, totally. Reach your arm outside and touch your sword against the outside. See what happens. Ooh. God, yeah, touch your sword arm against the sword. Touch, it. touch it. Sure, what the fuck? <laughs> you take every time you clink it, you take five D eight radiant damage. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> How many times did you do that? Did you do that three, three times? times? Yeah. I think you might stop after the first time as I was in light. <laughs> um and you can also take long rests inside this rush Oh yeah, Des is about oh, to take a big old nap. You don't need you don't need a tiny hut. I'm growing up with my with my lady and we're gonna take a nap. <laughs> okay. Uh Ray is flabbergasted and uh 426 sits by you and touches your hand uh and nods in approval. I'm sure how to fly. Sweet. I can show you. Okay. And Lulu comes up to you, Sovereignty, and says, I'm so proud of you, Sovereignty. We couldn't have got here without you, Lulu. Nor I without you. What's next? Zerio? I don't know. That's sort of a team call. Um, seems logical. We gotta get that contract first, right? No, I have it in my bag, don't I? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. To infinity and beyond! <laughs> yeah, I think I have the contract in my bag, so I think we can go destroy the contract and save Elkro. You, you can destroy the contract right here if you want. I pull the contract out of my bag! <laughs> and I, lay, I smooth it out because it's been crumpled in my bag. I smooth it out on the floor. Okay. Four, four did it. Metal. What? The contract is made out of like nine pieces of metal. Sovereignty, <laughs> stab I mean, it with I your mom. Dragon's breath it. I can just breathe fire and burn it. That's not gonna work at all. <laughs> That's very metal. You can try. That's not the issue. The, the, what it's made out of does not matter. Okay, I think sovereignty. You stab it with your mom's sword, maybe. Okay, ready. I'll do that outside the car, maybe. <laughs> That makes more sense, like collectively. <laughs> you take the contract and you uh, exit out into the remaining. I do it again outside. Was a and then I run away. Des puts it down. Sovereignty. Take this order of Zerio. Unsheath it. And it's a blinding glow. And you come down. Touch it. And then in blue fire, it all kicks up and the contract is gone. Uh, at the same time, you see a glow from Elturel just shoot up in the air. And that's where we'll stop for this time. Ah, he sounds so good. Good job. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Ring that notification bell. Subscribe. Check us out on Discord and Instagram. Woo-hoo. This is the best show next to Critical Role. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Peace.